Dr. Emmy Thompson Field, the first home game of this 2011 season, the first of three at home. This week, West Green. Next week, the first district game of the year. Wartburg comes to town. And then the week following that, Cumberland Gap will be in. So a chance three weeks in a row. Should be pretty good weather. Chance for folks to get out and see the Indians on the home field and support them. Tonight, we've got a pretty good crowd building at this time. Uh, a week ago, there was a lot of action. Every team in the district was in action. Only one came out on top as the winner. John, you've got the district standings from last week and uh, then a look ahead at who's playing who this week. Yeah, coming off the first week of action, I guess it's still term week zero, is it not, Tim? So, uh, but the first week of action for most schools and uh, every team in our district played last week. Sunbright, the only team that pulled off a win last week, 28 to 14, and they're sitting at the top of the standings in our district right now overall. Cofield takes a loss, so does Jellicoe, Oakdale, Oliver Springs, Oneida, and Wartburg. Oliver Springs, we've heard that they've got a lot of returning players and they're going to be in an interesting matchup tonight at Greenback. So I think a lot of Oneida fans will be looking to that score, if not tonight, first thing in the morning to see how well Oliver Springs and Greenback match up because Oliver Springs should be a, a formidable foe down the road for Oneida. Cloudlands at Cofield tonight. That should be another interesting matchup, I think, Tim. Uh, North Green at Jellicoe, Oakdale at Pickett County. Of course, West Green is here at Oneida. Copper Basin at Sunbright and Pigeon Forge at Wartburg. So again, these district our district teams, they are. I think they have stepped up their scheduling here in the last couple of years, team, Tim, because we're seeing across our districts them stepping out and playing some really tough non-conference teams. And Oneida's doing the same this year. Three, you know, three of our first four games are against non-conference or non-district opponents, and uh, they're tough. The Indians will be facing a, another tough opponent, as you mentioned tonight. Here are the. West Green Buffaloes for Coach Joe Case. He's in his fifth year. As I mentioned, the, the Buffaloes from 13, 12 years ago, they didn't win games. Uh, Coach Joe Case has consistently taken this team and, uh, and won games. They haven't been, you know, uh, eight and two seasons, but again, they play in a very tough district. South Green, pretty good football team over there as well. That's in their district. So uh, you've got some strong competition, Chucky Doak in the area. So uh, he, he's done a good job building a program that was just really a bottom feeder in AAA. And you know, Tim, that speaks <coughs> speaks well of him to be there for five years. You know, anytime you start getting in that five to six year range, that means that you're doing something. People are noticing that, that you're turning a program around and it becomes a mindset in your program that, you know, you're gonna win. You want to go to the playoffs and that's big as well and Oneida, We've been there for a long time, and but you go back to last year and bleeding into the first game of this season, the past two years, we're four and seven. You know, that's something that Oneida fans aren't used to. So we're looking to get back on the winning ways here tonight, and uh, and, uh, and hopefully that will be the case. But like I said, we're as I look out on the field at West Green, they are a very large team, and it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. We mentioned the Indians will be home for their first district game next week, and uh, just a, a mention forward to that one. You'll remember last year, it was a little bit of a tone setter, I think, for Oneida on a kind of a freaky play against the Wartburg Bulldogs, a team that doesn't appear to be as strong as they were a year ago as they fell pretty hard to Cumberland Gap last week. No disrespect to Cumberland Gap, but uh, that's, that's going to be a, an important game as well. Uh, in this series next week. It definitely will. And it'll be the first game that'll be meaningful, Tim. You know, alluded to earlier, that's going to be the first district game. That's the one that you got to, I mean, even if you lose tonight, you, you start out the season 0-2, but the district championship is still up for grabs. And it's that, that season starts next week when Wartburg comes to town. And every, I think this team's going to remember what happened down there. You know, probably could have, should have won that game, but it comes down to one play in that game that really turned the tide. Just like last week, come down to one play on a fourth down and one in overtime at Greenback, and it doesn't go Oneida's way. You know, Oneida's got to start making those plays go their way in the end to get some of these games behind them. And it's going to be, there's going to be more games like that in this season. Too many teams are, 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 are too good in our district this year, Tim. All right, we'll have more here on the pregame report brought to you by Citizens First Bank when we continue. It's the Oneida Indians, the West Green Buffaloes coming up on WBNT. Tape delay action later tonight. Welcome back to Dr. Emmy Thompson Field. The first home game of the season tonight. The West Green Buffaloes are in town. The first time in 13 years these two teams have squared off. Oneida owns the 1-0 one edge as they were 35-0 winners back in that game in 98. They're hoping uh, to be able to pull off the same tonight, but a much different opponent is across the field from them on this one. 
Coach John Brewster was asked by Kevin Akers earlier today his thoughts on this game tonight, and we'll share those with you right now. Uh, it's going to be a uh, very physical. It's going to be a challenge for our kids, you know, depth-wise. Uh, you know, they they play two and three deep. We're, you know, in some spots we're, you know, we're lucky to be two deep at some spots. But our kids are excited. They're they're ready to get a win. Uh, it's kind of like a. a Coach Tony Zachary came in and talked to our kids and talking about last week. You know, we pretty much we went into the lines then, you know, against a, a community uh, uh, that was wanting to win. And, you know, our kids performed well. You know, uh, I talked to the kids this week. Uh, you know, we gave up a kickoff return. We worked real hard on that. And, you know, they drove the ball, I think, 14 or 15 yards for one score and drove it 10 yards for another score. So that's, you know, 14 points right there off 24, 25 yards. So, you know, it's just uh, keeping the kids' heads up and encouraging them. Uh, just, you know, so proud of the way they played last week because, uh, you know, honestly, Greenback was a lot faster than us. You know, they were a little bit bigger than us. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Birch talked to the kids and, and uh, you know, uh, we talked about that we're not the fastest team in the world. We're not the biggest team in the world. But when we play football and want to play for each other and, and play for Oneida, we're a pretty dang good football team. So, uh, you know, we, we've challenged our kids. And, uh, you know, I expect them to come out tomorrow night and, uh, you know, give their all for Oneida. All right, Coach Brewster's thoughts on uh, tonight's game with the West Green Buffaloes. One thing also we want injury to get wise, injury wise, we, uh, we don't have Jacob Flint back. He's still got a shoulder that got hurt the uh, first or second day of practice. You know, we, we're certainly looking forward to getting him back. Uh, also, Trevor Allen, he's he's got a sh uh, dislocated shoulder, but we've got him in a uh, uh, sleeve under shoulder pads, and uh, Dr. Robbins said he was a go. Uh, Bear has a uh, fractured orbital bone. And uh, we've put a shield on him. Uh, you know, it's a very uh, touchy injury, you know, a touchy situation uh, as far as, you know, we we're trying to protect him as much as we can. But the doctors assured us that, that you know, we weren't taking uh, any major risks in playing him. So, you know, we've got a couple of kids banged up, you know, just normal uh, nicks and stuff after a, a physical ball game. But, uh, you know, otherwise, you know, I wish we I wish we were 100 percent, but we're not. So, uh, you know, but we're we're OK. You know, we're in pretty good shape. All right. Coach Brewster's thoughts and his uh talk about the injury and that gets you set for tonight's game stay with us coming up it's going to be the scott highlanders on the road versus the york dragons immediately following that we'll have our tape delay broadcast of the oneida indians and the west green buffaloes you've been listening to the citizens first bank pregame report good evening welcome to dr emmy thompson field tonight the oneida indians and the west green buffaloes for the second time ever Oneida will be squaring off with this team from West Green, and the Indians are hoping to have as good a luck as they did the last time. 1998, the last meeting between the two. Oneida won that one 35 to nothing. That was a much different time and two very different teams. The Indians that season would finish undefeated, and the West Green Buffaloes would finish winless. This team is different. Coach Joe Case in his fifth season with the West Green Buffaloes has turned what was a doormat program into a consistent playoff appearing program in a powerhouse area. They share a district with last year's state champion in AAA, the Greenville Green Devils. Tim Smith with you for the play-by-play. -play. John Strunk along as well. John, kind of, you don't know how to approach a game like this. You know, it's not a long-time rival, something you're excited about for that reason. But you do know it's, it's a game that you very much want to win, uh, but it's a, an opponent you know very little about, you're not familiar with, but you do know they're packing. And they are. I mean, you, we, we watched them warm up, and, and I alluded to it probably more than five times in, in pregame, Tim. They're big. I mean, just looking at them, they're impressively big. And so uh, Coach, Coach Brewster in pregame talked about he thought this was going to be a physical game. It's kind of scary for Oneida. This is our second game of the season. We don't need to lose anybody. We need, yeah, we, we are deep a little bit this year, you know, at some positions, but we don't want to lose anybody key to our, to our team and in a game that is kind of meaningless. It's not a district game, but we want to perform well and we want to, we want to see what we're made of, what our medal is. So uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting test, a very daunting task, I believe, for Oneida tonight because it, it does look to be physical. Okay, we're going to hear from Coach Brewster and take a look around the district and the district standings. Only one team in District 4A came out on top last week. We had six that lost their opening games. 
And I don't, I don't think anybody would have probably put money on this one to be the only team that won last week in our district. But. We'll tell you who it was when we come back. Right now we take this break as you listen to a night of football on WBNT-FM. And one. Welcome back to Dr. Emmy Thompson Field, the Oneida Indians, the West Green Buffaloes tonight here on WBNT as we get set for the second ever meeting between these two teams and the first time that West Green has made the trip here to Scott County. We are going to let you know what we know about West Green through the voice of Coach John Brewster. He was asked earlier by Kevin Akers about West Green and offensively, here's what he said to look out for. Offensively, uh, West Green's uh, a lot like us. Um, uh, Joe Case, their head coach, he worked for for Don Woods at Morristown West for a long time, and uh, you know he, he carries uh, Don's philosophy as far as you know uh, time of possession, take care of the football, run it, uh, short passing game, and and eat clock, don't turn the ball over. That's what their offense is uh, based on. Uh, huge offensive lineman. Uh, a tailback that's going to Elon, uh, good-looking kid. He's, he's rushed for, I think, 3,700 yards or something like that going into his senior year. So uh, he's, a, he's a special kid. He's a little bit different than Seymour from uh, Greenback last week. He's a, he's a smaller back in stature. He's uh, comparable, I guess, to Braxton Hudson that played for us a couple years ago. But he's a 410-pound bench presser, and he runs a uh, – he was clocked in 448. Uh, this summer at a summer football camp. So, uh, you know, the offense obviously is going to revolve around him and, uh, uh, you know, the short passing game. So there you have information on uh, the So he may be offense. strong, but it, but he's quick too. Yeah. 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 Okay. And he's uh, already signed with Elon University. So the, that's tailback Dalton Bowles he's talking about. What about the Buffalo's defense? Defensively, uh, you know, I still see I see a lot of uh, Don uh, Woods on them defensively too. They're going to play a uh, three-four cover two. Uh, you know, they're going to take away the deep ball. Uh, you know, they're not going to let you throw it deep because they've got two safeties sitting on the hashes waiting to uh, go get it. So we're, uh, you know, you're going to have to use, utilize your short passing game against them too. Uh, if you have any uh, hope of throwing it deep, uh, you're going to have definitely throw it short and uh, run the football to establish a deep passing game against their defense. So given that scenario, Coach Brewster, the next logical question was, uh, what are we going to try to do offensively against that 3-4? Offensively, we're going to uh, keep the same philosophy. We're going to try and run the football and, and uh, obviously, like I said earlier, against a cover two defense, you need to utilize short passing game. Uh, so that's that's the game plan, you know. We're not going to try and be fancy. We're just going to try and be uh, real fiscal up front with them. Uh, you know, we've got, uh, you know, Houston West has had a great week of practice. Uh, we've we've uh, tried to figure out different ways to get him the football. Uh, Dannon and Bayer, uh, kids had a great week of practice so far, and they're hungry. They want their first win. So, uh, you know, offensively, I've been uh, really pleased with their effort this week. All right, so that's the Indians' plan offensively. Against Dalton Bowles and the West Green offense, what will be the plan for the Indians? Defensively, we know they want to run the football. Uh, they have some great athletes. I think they have about 70 or 80 kids on their football team, so they have uh, depth and, uh, you know, great receivers. We played them in seven-on-seven seven at Morristown West this summer, and, and they had, I think, 45 or 50 skill guys that were there for that. So, you know, they're a very deep football team. Uh, defensively, we're going to try and pack the box. We're going to take some chances. Uh, our kids have done a great job. Uh, with our defense now, we're really flexible. We can jump in a... 3-3 three, three stack, a 5-3, a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, played a lot of 3-4 and a lot of 50 this week. Uh, we're just going to try and get more bodies in the box than what they can block. All right, you hear the drum beat, the pride of the tribe, as they prepare to welcome the Indians to battle at Dr. M.E. Thompson Field for the first time in this 2011 season. John, the, uh, the year is underway. The Indians lose in overtime to Greenback a week ago. They're going to try to ride the ship here tonight, and they come out in orange jerseys and orange pants as they charge through the formation. I bet you forgot about the train horn. I bet I didn't. <laughs> the Indians 
and the Western Buffaloes are coming up. You're listening to Onada Football on WBNT FM. And it rolls. It's Dr. Emmy Thompson Field. The Indians are on the field. West Green has taken the field. What about Indian injuries? The update from Coach Brewster. Injury-wise, we uh, we don't have Jacob Flint back. He's still got a shoulder that got hurt the uh, first or second day of practice. You know, we're certainly looking forward to getting him back. Uh, also, Trevor Allen, he's he's got a sh uh, dislocated shoulder, but we've got him in a uh, uh, sleeve under his shoulder pads. And uh, Dr. Robbins said he was a go. Uh, Bear has a uh, fractured orbital bone, and uh, we've put a shield on him. Uh, you know, it's a very uh, touchy injury, you know, a touchy situation uh, as far as, you know, we were trying to protect him as much as we can, but the doctors assured us that, that you know, we weren't taking uh, any major risks in playing him. So, you know, we've got a couple of kids banged up, you know, just normal uh, nicks and stuff after a, a physical ball game. But, uh, you know, otherwise, you know, I wish we I wish we were 100%, but we're not. So, uh, you know, but we're, we're okay. You know, we're in pretty good shape. All right, we'll have Coach Brewster's closing thoughts on this one. But first, John, we promised to recap last week's action in the District 4A standings. Yep, and the only team in our district that secured a win last week was Sunbright. So they sit at the top of the District 4A standings with one one win and no losses in week zero. The rest of the schools, Cofield, Jellicoe, Oakdale, Oliver Springs, Oneida, Wartburg, all sitting at 0-1 on the season. And, uh, of course, Cofield lost a nail-biter as well, 34-33 last week. Now, this week, the District 4A schedule pans out like this. Another good game for Cofield as they host Cloudland. North Green is at Jellicoe, Oakdale at Pickett County. And, and like I said in pregame, Tim, this, this one I think a lot of Oneida fans will be interested in either tonight, late, or in the morning. Oliver Springs at Greenback. West Green at, at Oneida, of course. Copper Basin at Sunbright. And Pigeon Forge at Wartburg. Indians win the toss. They'll defer to the second half. Uh, it's going to be a uh, very physical. It's going to be a challenge for our kids, you know, depth-wise. Uh, you know, they, they play two and three deep or, you know, in some spots we're, you know, we're lucky to be two deep in some spots, but our kids are excited. They're, they're ready to get a win. Uh, it's kind of like a, uh, Coach Tony Zachary came in and talked to our kids and talking about last week. You know, we pretty much, we went into the lines then, you know, against a, a community uh, uh, that was wanting a win. And, you know, our kids performed well. You know, uh, I talked to the kids this week. Uh, we gave up a kickoff return. We worked real hard on that. And, you know, they drove the ball, I think, 14 or 15 yards for one score and drove it 10 yards for another score. So that's, you know, 14 points right there off 24, 25 yards. So, you know, it's just uh, keeping the kids' heads up and encouraging them. Uh, just, you know, so proud of the way they played last week because, uh, you know, honestly, Greenback was a lot faster than us. You know, they were a little bit bigger than us. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Birch talked to the kids and, and uh, you know, uh, we talked about that we're not the fastest team in the world, we're not the biggest team in the world, but when we play football and want to play for each other and, and play for Oneida, we're a pretty dang good football team. All right, the Oneida Indians set to kick it off. Dalton Bowles, that running back we told you about, he's deep to return, stands at his goal line. Manning had a couple of touchbacks last week. The Indians will kick from right to left as you view your dial. The Buffaloes in their road, white jerseys, blue numerals, blue pants, gold helmets with a blue WG on the side, the West Green Buffaloes. Oneida, here comes Manning to the football. Kick is in the air, end over ending its way. It's going to be fielded by Bowles. He drops it, goes back to retrieve it at the four. Now looking for a lane. He's passed three, four defenders. Jarrett Lay wraps him up at the 15-yard line. He'll fall forward to about the 17. So the Indian kickoff cover team does a good job, and they hold West Green behind the 20 to start this one off. For the West Green Buffaloes here on the road, up front it will be Dustin Carter, the center, the offensive line, Caleb Julian, William Cutshaw, Daniel Whitehead, Amy and Kesterson. Also, we'll set the rest of them in just a moment. First, the quarterback, Jeffrey Reinhardt, will be under center. Dalton Bowles, the single back behind him, a wing back off to the left, listed as a fullback, Landon Duckett. From left to right, they will go. The handoff to Bowles. He draws a crowd. He draws some yardage as well as he gets across the 20, out to about the 22. A gain of three. It'll be second down and seven for the West Green Buffaloes. Continuing the Buffaloes' starting lineup, we mentioned their tight end is going to be Matt Hinkle. The receivers, Austin Davis and Alex Gregory. 
The fullback, Landon Duckett. The tailback, Dalton Bowles. And the quarterback is Jeffrey Reinhardt. We'll set the Indians' defense in just a moment. But first, it's second down seven for West Green. Same set. This time, though, no tight end, an extra receiver. Three receiver set. Here's the give. Bowles Stretch. off the right, off the left side. He's going to be wrapped up at about the 25-yard line. Bang. So there's a gain of about three more yards. They may put it halfway between the 25 and 26. But this grinded out early start for West Green will bring up a third and a long three or a short four, however you want to look at it, for the Indians. They, as we mentioned, have... have uh, Trevor Allen up front, along with Jarrett Lay, Adam Young, and Zach Terry. The linebackers, Brandon Smith, will set the rest in a moment. Now an eye formation on third and a long three. Wes Green takes the snap. Give is fumbled, fumbled the and it's still loose. And the oh, Indians, I believe it. they have it. They do have it, Tim. Looks like at about the 24-yard line, had a new tailback. It was Heath Starnes. Starnes put the ball on the ground. It looked like Brandon Smith was at the head of causing that fumble, and it's going to be first and 10 Indians at the 24-yard line of West Green. You know, you got that's a head scratcher right there. You got Bowles, who's your horse. You got a third and very manageable deep in your own territory on, on your first series of downs. You're on the road. Uh, you know, why not stay with him? So the Indians. Get a fortunate break here, and we'll start from the shotgun, but first whistles, and looks like some confusion. A timeout for Oneida, and that's not how they wanted to start offensively. We'll take the same, 10-31 to play in the first quarter. Your score, it's the Oneida Indians zero, the West Green Buffalo zero. Welcome back to Dr. Emmy Thompson Field. Much thanks to the sponsors of football here on WBNT-FM, including the stand program, Plateau Drugs, Rainbow Ford, Mountain People's Health Council, Marler's Auto Mart, b, b Roofing and Metals, Hometown Furniture, Cell Depot, McDonald's of Oneida, Miller and Son Concrete and Paving, and Brennan's Foot and Ankle Care. First and 10 Indians recovering a fumble at the West Green 24. From the shotgun, it's going to be Cole West firing the pass, and it will be incomplete. Cole's intended receiver, Toby Hood, lined up wide left. John, last week we saw Toby in the tailback or halfback position most of the time. This time lined up wide as a receiver. Also out there as receivers were Tanner Boshears, Adam Massingale, and Houston West. So that will stop the clock with 10.27 to play in the first quarter, and it will be second and 10, Oneida at the 24. The Indians come out of the gate passing tonight. Yeah, and Brewster, he, he mentioned that short passing game would be the key as they, they run a two-deep safety uh, formation on defense, and they're showing it again here. Now back to the pistol type formation and it's going to be Weber in motion to the right side blocking for Dan and West. West is going to be wrapped up and brought down no gain so the West Green defense sees an incomplete pass and then plays the run very nicely. It's going to be third and ten Indians. Yeah eight in the box maybe nine in the box right there Tim. They brought the safety up to the weak side wanted to bring him off the corner uh, so they're going they know with, that our strength is running as well so they're just going to stack the box and, and shoot the gaps and Right there, it was a jailbreak for them as we got nothing on second down. So now the Indians, with their third offensive play of the game, go back to a four wide receiver set. And from the shotgun, this is going to be Cole West to his left. Weber, here's the snap. West looking, quick screen, caught by Houston West. West is going to be forward to the 20, down to about the 18, maybe the 17. He will be short of the first down by about four yards. It'll be fourth down and four, and the Indians, will they kick it? They got to they gotta do weapon. We talked about him last week. Here, here comes, comes the kicker. Manning's coming on to attempt the field goal from the 18. This will be about a 35-yard field goal attempt from the right hash mark. Keep, keep Kevin in his seat over there. He's getting all antsy. He loves a kicking game. He does. And the Indians going to line it up here with 9.07 to play in the first quarter, trying to get the early lead. Adam Massengale to hold it. Taking a lot of time on this, John, it seems to me. I'm worried we're going to get close to that countdown. Massengale looks there it in. Comes. And there it is. You're right. We just lost five yards. And uh, that's going to move it from a 35-yard attempt to a 40-yard attempt. You know, there's a good trivia question. We don't have the trivia tonight, but when was the last time Oneida attempted a 40-yard field goal? You might want to go back to the Jimmy Barna area. I bet you would. I bet you that's right exactly where it would exist. From the right hash mark, a 40-yard attempt for Oneida. The holder will be Adam Massingale. Here's the snap. Massingale gets the hold down. There's penetration. Bang. The kick is on the way, and that could have been 
Oh! That could have been 50. But he nailed it. Off to the left. He nailed it. There's no doubt about that. He got her up. He almost kicked it over the net from 40 yards out. So, it will be back to West Green. They survived the early fumble. Disappointing to come away from that golden opportunity with no points. So now West Green back on offense. Jeffrey Reinhardt is the quarterback. And a flag comes down from the side judge. Is this somebody lining up offsides, John? I think maybe they may have twitched. Moved the football exactly. prior. Exactly. Okay. False start on West Green. And that's a tough call. I mean, nobody nobody moved on the orange side, on the Oneida side. Sometimes the center comes up and he wants to position the ball, to, you know, get a grip on it, put the laces a certain way. But he must have done something that the official did not like. So from their own 15-yard line, West Green, Reinhardt under center. He'll take the snap. He'll hand it off to Bowles, looking for a hole over the left side. One. He found one, and he drives forward through it, creating extra yardage as he gets across the 20 to the 22. Bowles on the carry, a gain of seven. And you can't say that a lot tonight, Tim. You cannot say Bowles with a gain of five or more yards on each carry and, and us to have a chance here tonight. We got to contain him. Back under center, Reinhardt with two receivers to the right, one to the left, and a wing back to the right, Landon Duckett, Bowles, the standing tailback. On second and eight, they'll give it to Bowles. Bowles finds some room in the middle. He nice cut eludes back. one man. Now he's breaking a host of tackles as he drives across the 35 out to about the 39 yard line with a huge run from the 22 to the 39, a 17-yard gain for Bowles and a first and 10 for the Buffaloes. Yeah, nice job of misdirection and nice job of blocking it by West Green, Tim. They just took our left side of the defensive line and removed them from the play altogether, and Bowles had a nice cutback lane, did a nice job cutting back to get more, but then he carried us. I'd say he had four or five orange bodies on top of him for about the last three, so uh, very strong, very quick. Just a dynamic running back that we're going to see tonight, Tim. He's got a little heavy breathing going, but he's going to stay in there. First and 10 at his own 39-yard line. Reinhardt taking the snap. Bowles again. This time left side. There's Big a hole. hole. There's a flag down as Bowles eludes one man and gets a first down into Oneida territory down to the Indian 43, but a flag way back at the 40-yard line. The referee's indication. This may be a block below the... Yeah, we got a hurt player right here, and that's I hope it's not from this penalty. Trevor Allen. And that's someone we don't need. We've alluded to this to start the show. We want to play this team. We really do, but we don't want to lose. We don't want to lose kids to injury. You know, a 10-yard penalty in that situation, it, and what really, it, it helps Oneida, but it really hurts Oneida because we lose a star player. Ooh. That's going all the way back at 15 yarder back to the 25. Yeah, chop chop block basically is, is deemed an unnecessary roughness kind of penalty. So uh, but that's tough for Oneida to lose Trevor Allen. He's a horse right there in, in the middle for us on defense. So West Green with a first and 24 at their own 25 yard line. They need the 49 yard line for a first and 10. Reinhardt. Directing traffic, he's going to have a pair of receivers off to the left side. That's where his wing back is. Duckett on that left side, and Bowles is out. The man who fumbled earlier is in, and now it's going to be the quarterback on a keeper. Good blocking out there for him. He's going to take it up the left sideline, and how much will he pick up? It looks like he got about 15 of the 25 he needed. Reinhardt on the carry, and pretty quick legs there for the quarterback, John. Yeah, and they're, they're just, you know, student body right, right, or student body left for them, that is, Tim, defensive right, and uh, they did a good job blocking downfield for him. He, it was just a design play all the way for the quarterback to just pull out and, and roll deep to the to the left side of the, the offense, and Oneida's got to do a better job of penetration. They're getting too much push is the offensive front and also blocking well down the field is the, run, is the receivers and running backs. Starnes is that tailback, and now Kind of an offset eye formation behind Reinhardt. And it's going to be Reinhardt looking to run. A couple of Indians wrap him up. Nicely done. Well played. Jarrett Lay, very disciplined. And you had good penetration.
from the Indians, Christian Lawrence as well to flush him out. Gain of one, it'll be third and nine. Yeah, Lawrence, though, he's playing that defensive end position, so he's got to be real careful. I take that back. He looks like he's lined up at tackle. He got back there but, but broke inside too much and thought the quarterback might break it out. But like you said, Jarrett Lay, the senior, playing his position, very disciplined, nothing to his outside. He was coming down the line and was able to make the play well, along with Lawrence. Bowles back in. This team needs nine from their own 40. It's third and nine. Big Reinhardt under center. Bowles, the standing tailback. Here's the snap. Reinhardt draw play. Bowles with some running room. He's going to have first down yardage into Oneida territory as he lowers his headgear and takes on Indian tacklers all the way to the Oneida 47-yard line where it's going to be first and 10. Bowles on the carry. He picks up 13 yards. Very awkward handoff there between the quarterback and, and running back. It was actually a left-handed handoff going backwards to his right and... Uh, it was design draw, and it really caught Oneida off guard. Oneida's got to realize this team doesn't want to throw it. Their main weapon is back there is at running back, but you got to respect the pass, but you also got to respect their number one priority is bowls in the backfield. Six minutes to play in this scoreless first quarter, halfway through it. Here's the fullback, and nice this job, will be Jarrett. Duckett. Good job by Jarrett Lay, bringing Duckett down, and then a late flag comes in, John. Let's see who this is against. I think West Green thinks it's going to be against them. You know, I think West Green's a little chippy. You know, it's almost like they remember 1998 or something. They are, they're talking it up. And I say that in jest. Most of these guys probably were very young. But, yeah, it, it was in the defensive backfield for Oneida, and either one of our players said or did something or one of theirs. It's a, Maybe it's us who are getting chippy. Yeah. I never seen anything late as far as it had to be something that was said. If it was something that was said, the guy needs to start running right now. I'm talking laps. Okay, so the Indians have now allowed West Green to the Oneida 29-yard line, and we're going to have a break in the action here. This is one of those water breaks, I believe. So with 5.59 to play in the first quarter, we'll take a break. With your score, it's the Oneida Indians zero, the West Green Buffaloes zero. Welcome back to Dr. Emmy Thompson Field, the Oneida Indians, the West Green Buffaloes. We're at a water break here in the early, early games of the season in the heat. They take this and halfway through the first quarter, we're scoreless. Actually, I think West Green may have called a timeout, Tim. Oh, okay. That was the indication. Uh, we want to remind you to follow us on Facebook.com. You can find us at OHS Indian Radio or now on Twitter. It's just OHS Radio. Either way, you can get updates live from the game. OHS Indian Radio on Facebook.com or at Twitter at OHS Radio. Coming off a disappointing penalty against Oneida. First and 10 at the Indians, 29. Duck it. There you go. Meet hit, him in the hole. Hit in the hole, and that is a very good job by the Indians. Discipline play and meeting him there for Oneida, Corey Lay. It'll be a gain of two, and it will be second and eight upcoming. Corey Lay in there at middle linebacker. You know, come up and met him in the hole. He didn't sit back. Back there three or four yards away from the play, he came up, filled the hole, met the running back. Yeah, he gave a little ground as he's also given about, I would say, 15 to 20 pounds to the running back, but got him on the ground. Nice job. So now, once again in the eye, bowls the tailback here. Tied in and a receiver to either side. Here's the snap. They fake to the fullback. They're going to pitch it to Bowles. Oh, oh, oh got that's that face a, yeah. mask. Zach Terry's there Did with an him. But awesome job. He was right there with him, but he got a hold of the face mask. This is going to be a 15 yarder against the Oh, Indians. my goodness. That's 30 yards of penalties here on this second drive for West Green. Oh, not doing them some favors. And Zach Terry, young man, we're not calling you out because of the penalty. I'm calling you out because you did an awesome job to contain your edge. Get out there on that running back. I mean, run him down from his position. You just can't tackle with the face mask. Personal foul, face mask. So that's two personal fouls on this drive. We're just helping them. We're, we're not, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely not uh, helping our cause here on defense. So with 5.13 to play in the first quarter, West Green now with a first and 10. They're at the Oneida Indian 12 and a half yard line. This feels more like the first game actually than last week as far as the penalties are concerned, Tim. Didn't see a ton of them last week. Bowles 
the tailback with a ducket on the wing to the left side, a receiver to either side. And here's Reinhardt oh, taking a snap. The he gives to Bowles. Bowles is hit at the line, drives through it all the way inside the five and close to the goal line. Bowles, much oh, like oh, Seymour oh. last week, John, we saw contact early, but uh, these two running backs, you see why they're both so highly touted as first contact does not mean they're going down. It does not, Tim. He runs hard. He runs downhill. The old adage, running downhill. He's always leaning forward, always diving forward, always working for that extra yard. Very low center of gravity. He's like a fire hydrant. You know, he's not going to be able to rip that ball away from him very easily. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us tonight with him in the backfield. Second and one at the three. You think it might be Bowles. Duckett in front of Why him. Not? Here's the give to Bowles behind Duckett. Brandon Smith there, but he stretches forward and gets the three yards for the touchdown as Bowles puts West Green on the board. Just a nice drive, you know, by, by, by West Green, Tim. Unfortunately, though, benefited by two big penalties for, against Oneida, person, to both of those personal fouls in bad situations. But uh, Oneida can rebound. It's only a one-score game right now. Trevor Wilson will kick the extra point. Alex Gregory to hold as Wes Green's second possession nets them a touchdown after a fumble on their first possession and Onada unable to capitalize. Just a grinding series of plays. Here's the extra point attempt, and it is good. Time in on the field with your score. It's the West Green Buffalo 7, the Onada Indians 0. 2 and 1. Welcome back to Dr. Emmy Thompson Field here in Oneida. As we can tell you, there is a score. Unfortunately, it's the visitor. West Green is up 7 to nothing against Oneida here with 4.14 left in the first quarter. And, and Tim, just a, a nice drive by West Green. But unfortunately, of the 67 yards on that 11-play drive, 30 of them came off penalties, two big personal foul, foul penalties against Oneida. So Oneida doing them all kinds of favors on that drive. So to kick it off now for West Green, it'll be Dustin Carter, deep to return for the Indians, Houston West. Carter, end over ending, it's angling over toward Toby Hood, and then it's gonna go out of bounds, and it will be the Indians to get the football. I don't think Toby touched it, did he? Nope. No, I don't know. No, he didn't, you're right. So there was it's no flag thrown, but there should have been. So it's gonna be a penalty against West Green for the kickoff out of bounds. Oneida will take over first and 10 at their own 35. Oh, there's the penalty. So the Indians' second offensive possession, the first one ended in a three and out, and then a missed field goal attempt, John. You know, and it was a beautiful kick, a, a nice kick just from the angle. It looked like it was in, but it must have been wide left. So the Indians now with an offset eye behind Cole West. Here's the snap, fakes to the fullback, gives to the tailback, Brandon Smith. He eludes one, two, three tacklers, drives through two more for five yards on first down. Nice run by Brandon Smith. Yeah, and the corners for West Green, they come up. They play bump and run, does West Green's corners against us anyway tonight. They're within a yard of the line of scrimmage, and they're all over our receivers. Unfortunately, the corner was the one that actually came off a block and was able to get in there and get Brandon, so our receivers got to do a better job of staying with those blocks. So the Indians now on second down and five. Safety's up. Safety's coming off the corner. Snap. Here's the give. Oh, a little loose on the give. Brandon Smith able to secure it, and he gets about three more. Oneida needs to recognize that the corners are coming up, Tim. This has been a couple of plays I've noticed that they want to go without a safety, does Wes Green. If we can just run a, a quick slant or something in behind the linebackers and actually connect on it, which we tried to do that the very first play, but if there's no safety back there and we connect on it, we're gone. So now third down and two for the Indians. Two safeties back this play for West Green. Five on the line, there's the snap, give to the fullback and he's driving forward and he has first down yardage. That is Weber gashing the middle for five yards. It's a nice job by Oneida, just wanting to keep those chains moving, keep the offense out there, get a little bit of flow going offensively for Oneida. Nothing special. All three plays right, really off guard, not off tackle, staying right in between the guards. 
So first and 10 for the Indians at their own 48 yard line. Trying to get into West Green territory. Here's to give to Dan and West. Too much penetration. My goodness. And that'll go for no gain. It'll be second and 10. Looks like they ran a stunt from the middle linebacker and he read it well, shot a gap and was able to actually get the running back right as he got the ball. If, if he doesn't do that, we'd look like we had it blocked well and might've got a lot of good gains there, Tim, but uh, for not, nice play by the middle linebacker. So actually it went for one and it'll be second and about nine. And there's some confusion about the alignment here for the Indians. They get it settled on second and nine. Cole West brings Houston West in motion. Here's the snap. Give us the tailback. Brandon Smith finds a hole, spins off the first contact, gets forward into West Green territory to the 47-yard line, and that will be a gain of about four, and it'll be third and five. This is a tough play call here. It's basically third and long for Oneida, as you said, third and five. So it could be a pass or a run situation here. It will be interesting to see how West Green plays this play. Do they bring their safeties up and play run, or do they sit back and, and play underneath for a pass? West Green leads seven to nothing here against the Oneida Indians. And Oneida now with a third down and five at the West Green 47 yard line. Cole West takes the snap, turns, gives to Brandon Smith. He's hit, he drives forward. Brandon Smith picks up three and it will be fourth down and two for the Indians. It's almost like we can't get everybody blocked. West Green's playing well. We're getting it blocked well up front. It's just they've got one guy that's always there and they make sure tackles. Nobody gets away. We're not able to get away from that initial contact. Our running backs aren't, but you got to credit West Green. They're, making, they're doing a good job of getting the guys on the ground at first contact. So Zach Terry's going to punt it. He'll, he'll stand back at his own 45-yard line. The ball at the West Green 44-yard line. Deep to return, Dalton Bowles, so you do not want to return. Two weeks in a row, we faced one of these feature good backs that's a returner, and here's the snap. Zach Terry gets a nice one. High hanger in the air. Fair catch called for by Bowles. He dropped it. Who got on it? They're going to say Bowles got back on it. He's very lucky back at his own 12. We were very close there to Bowles, too, as he fielded the fair catch. You know, you got to give that receiver a little bit of a buffer room just to catch that fair catch as he made, made the signal well in advance of us getting downfield. So lucky we, we didn't get a penalty thrown there, Tim. So it'll be first and 10 for the Buffaloes. 36 seconds remain in the first quarter. And you got to think that for the for West Green that this is how they like to play, as Coach Coach Brewster alluded to. They like to grind it out. They like to use, use the clock to their advantage. They're up seven to nothing, and a, the first quarter is quickly went away. Dalton Bowles, the tailback, behind Duckett, and here's the snap. They give to Bowles. He'll cut it up Bang. inside. The Indians react nicely at about the 15-yard line. It'll be a gain of three for Bowles. He's still not on the ground. We met him in the hole. Five guys stood him up, and he still didn't go on the ground. So it'll be second and seven at their own 15-yard line. We'll see if there's going to be another play in this quarter as Doesn't it's quickly like it. coming to a close. West Green's not in a big rush. They've got the lead, and it looks like they're ready to walk to the other end. So the first quarter will come to a close here at Dr. Emmy Thompson Field, and we'll take the break after telling you the score. It's the West Green Buffalo 7, the United Indians 0 two and one. Once again, welcome back to Dr. Emmy Thompson Field here at Oneida. We can tell you as we get ready to start the second quarter action, seven to nothing is the score. West Green on top and they have the ball deep in their own territory on a second and seven at, the, at their own 15, Tim. First quarter stats went pretty heavy to West Green. Four first downs to one in favor of West Green. 76 total yards to Oneida's 28. 628 time of possession to Oneida's 532. Second and seven, Buffaloes at their own 15-yard line. Dalton Bowles, the standing tailback, and the wing back to the left is Landon Duckett. Here's the snap, misdirection, Bowles, hole in the middle. The Indians try to seal it up. Bowles is going to have about five yards on the carry, and it will be third and about two. No, we play it very well, but and he still gets five yards. I mean, that's that's just the way it's went tonight. The very first play at the end of the first quarter on this drive. We played it well, filled the hole, but he still managed to drive forward for three yards. You know, if, if a running back can get three plus yards every play, you're in trouble. 
So it's going to be third down and two coming up. Nothing fancy. I don't even know if they put it. Have they tried to throw it yet? I don't think so. They ran the draw. That was close as they got. Off, offset formation here. Unbalanced line. Here's the snap, the give. He eludes the first man and the Indians. Well, they might should have stayed balanced. It's no. It's going to be a gain of one now, it looks like, for Bowles. And uh, will West Green punt? Well, they don't look like it, Tim. They're not, they're not changing anything here. They may get quick to the line here and try to make us jump. They may just be playing for a timeout here. How we're going to measure. It didn't look close at all. They gave him the benefit of a good wow. spot. They gave him the benefit of a very good spot. We'll see. Mercy. 10.51 to play in the first half. West Green waiting to see if the chains are longer than the football, and they are My not. Goodness. Look like we made a good play, and I'll tell you this. The way he runs, he runs very hard. The officials have been late on their whistles because he's gotten some second effort, and so they're giving him the benefit of the whistle. They didn't blow the whistle there, and we drove him back, but they gave him the benefit of the forward progress. So West Green, first and 10 at their own 22. Wow, that's big. And they have a very tight set here. Duckett is leading, and also looks like maybe Heath Starnes is leading in a power eye here. No, I'm sorry, Starnes is the tailback out of the power eye. And Starnes powers his way forward for about 10 yards. The other fullback was Corey Lindsay. Very nice power running formation as Wes Green runs for a gain of 11. Yeah, you know, last week at Greenback, Greenback wore our right side of the defense out. Now, I don't know if, if Wes Green saw that on film or not, but they're doing the same thing, and they're running. They're just running. They have no receivers. It's basically a two tight end set. They're just lining up and coming at us. Lindsey and Duckett lead for Starnes in this power eye. Here's the snap. Give to Starnes. Left side Hello. this time. Oh, very nice play by the end. It's Christian Lawrence as he blasts through, came in unblocked, and brings Starnes down back for a loss of, they'll say, two at the 31-yard line. Very late whistle still, and I know I'm, I don't mean to harp on this point, but the, the officials are blowing the, the whistles very late. That, that kind of makes me nervous. You're going to get somebody hurt that way. So the Indians turn the, the West Green running game into a negative for the first time tonight. And Penetration. That, that'll bring Bowles back out. He'll be behind Corey Lindsay, the fullback. Pair of receivers off to the right, receiver to the left. Three receivers set, I formation on second and Gotta get 12. Back. Gotta get back. Here's the snap. They fake to the fullback. The quarterback is going to pitch it. It's a loose football, and Bowles gets back on it back at the 25. Looks I, like we wrestled it away. We got it. We have that football. It's ours. Surely not, John. Yep, Bo Shears has it, and they're going to give it to us. Hey, he never gave up on it. I didn't think he had it either, Tim, but he stuck his helmet in there. There was no call. The officials weren't back there yet. That's what happens in a scrum. It, it probably should have went to West Green, all, all, all kidding aside. But uh, Bo Shears, credit him with diving in there and taking that football away from him. So <clears throat> it'll be first and 10 Indians. That's a break. We'll take it. So Oneida, two offensive possessions, and they had good movement last time a little bit, but this is going to be the Cowboy package, and Hood comes in motion. Here's the snap, little misdirection. Uh -oh. Houston West to the 25, cutting outside now. He's to the 15, trying to shed past one man. Can't do it, gets popped. Whoa, Houston took a hit right there, but he picks up nine yards on the gain. It'll be second and short for the Indians. Houston's down, too. It looks like cramps. It'll be an eight-yard gain. Houston got popped, like you said, and the guy led with the crown of his helmet. That's a dangerous thing for both players. But he did get a pop, and he, he, he's bouncing up. He's good. He looks like he was stretching out a cramp. Cramps already, that's, that's not a good sign. So 8.59 to play in the first half. The Indians trying to capitalize on a West Green mistake. First time West Green fumbled, and not missed a 40-yard field goal. Now they're at the West Green 17 with a second down and two. Cole West back to the line. The Cowboy package. That's a pair of wing backs, a standing tailback. That's going to be Weber. Here's West bringing the man in motion. Hands it off to Weber. Weber trying to get two yards. He's got it. First down. 
inside the 15-yard line, falls forward for more as it looks like he's going to be spotted at about the West Green 12, maybe 11. It's the 12, first and 10 Indians. Just a straight-ahead dive play right there to get the two yards plus, a little bit more for the, that they needed for the first down. And nice hard running, and, you know, you got to give Oneida credit up front, you know. They were a little bit overpowered in, the, in a couple of drives there that West Green put on, Tim, and Oneida's trying to take advantage of these, this second turnover by West Green. So now at the 12, again, the Cowboy package, man in motion, here's the snap. They give to Toby Hood. He winds his arm, tries to cut it inside, and no, nothing doing. Drop for a loss of one here, and it will be second and 11. You know, just too much time expires in those, in those kind of plays, and West Green's too good. They, they handle things up front very well on their defensive front. They sort of clog it up, if you will. We got to do, uh, we've, we've had our most success. I don't say we got to do, we've had our most success from the quick hitters, Tim. Things that have gone off off guard and off tackle quicker. Get get past that big line that they've got and get into the, get into the, the secondary or into the linebacker set. Jarrett Lay in at fullback now on a second and 11. This is going to be Hood in motion, snap fake a misdirection and now it's Cole West looking pass run option he's going to run inside the 10 and be dragged out of bounds at about the eight so a gain of five for Cole West they were going to they were showing the little misdirection play we ran several times but they faked it flooded him out the quarterback out to the right side of the formation wanted to throw it into the corner of the end zone West Green played it well receivers got to do a better job of selling the block to pass option right there. Just they just they just never gave in to that, did West Green secondary. Cole West with that five yard gain. Now it's going to be third and six for the Indians at the eight of West Green and Onada wants a timeout. The score as we take the break, 738 to play first quarter. It's the West Green Buffalo seven, the Onada Indians zero. Two at some and point one. Could... Welcome back to Onada. Dr. Emmy Thompson Field is Oneida's driving. They're on about the eight-yard line going in, and it's 7-0 is the score. West Green leads 7.38 left to play before halftime. Third and six out of an Indian timeout. Here's that stack. Out. What do you call this? I don't know. The flying eye. I can't remember what I have to ask Coach Brewster. Here's the snap. They're going to give it to Brandon Smith, and West Green plays this nicely. It'll be no gain on the play, and so you're going to see Oneida probably attempt the field goal here. And Manning will come out. This attempt now from the right hash mark. And it will be a 26-yard attempt. Manning missed from 40 earlier. Seven minutes to go. This is a tough angle as well, Tim. Here's the snap, the hold, the kick from Manning is on the way, and it's good. Time out on the field, your score. 6.59 to play here in the first half. The score is West Green 7 and Oneida 3. And 1. Dr. Emmy Thompson Field is where we're at tonight once again, and Oneida has just got on the scoreboard. 7-3 to three is the score. West Green lives, leads. 6.59 left before halftime. And Tim, on that drive, Oneida after the fumble deep in its own territory at once again by West Green. Oneida is able to go six plays, 25 yards before the three-point play is made. Manning going to kick it off. Bowles deep. Here's a high end over ending kick, and it won't be Bowles. It'll be somebody else there at the 10. We'll get the number for you here in just a minute as he makes his way over to the 15, out to about the 20. That is number 10, Corey Lindsay, who is going to return it to the, let's see, the 23-yard line for West Green where it's going to be first and 10 for the Buffaloes. That time of possession, when we see it at halftime, it's going to be heavily in West Green's favor, one has to think. Well, I don't know, Tim. I mean, the, the first the first quarter was 628 West Green, 532 for Oneida. Oneida's not been able to cash in on the two turnovers deep in their own territory for West Green as we come away with three points off of those two turnovers. So West Green first and 10 at their own 23-yard line. The fullback here, Corey Lindsey, actually he's a wing back, now comes in motion from left to right. And here's the snap. They give to Bowles on a draw. He's got opening room. He's hit by the safety. Bounces off of that. Forward at to the 35-yard line. Bowles, uh, the contact's not bringing him down as he picks up a gain here of about 13 yards on first down. His center of gravity is just too low. He runs well. He runs hard. He's strong. You're not going to bring him down with the shoulder. 
And uh, bouncing off, as you said, Tim, is, is exactly what was happening there. We, we had someone around him at the line of scrimmage, wrapped around him, and he, and he, and he worked through it. So now it's going to be first and 10 from their own 36-yard line in the I formation. The snap gives a Duckett. Duckett, I'm sorry, that's not Duckett. That's uh, Lindsey. He's hit at the line and driven backwards. And you're right, John, about these whistles. They're allowing the gang tackles to go long. And, and then it's like they give a warning when they get up. It's going to uh, catch up in a bad way with somebody, it looks like, in a minute. I can almost guarantee you, Oneida has always been coached. You go till the whistle goes. And uh, if these kids from Oneida don't hear a whistle, they're going to hit you. And so, uh, I mean. I mean, that play ended seven yards behind the line of scrimmage, and it was a two-yard gain. And the official gives a horrible spot because he's, he's five yards down the field, and he doesn't even really care to get back to make a good spot. That's just my opinion. It's been going on all night. So West Green has Bowles as the tailback. Duck it. Not in right now. Bowles, a little misdirection. Brandon Smith catches up to him. Four Indians su surround him. He'll gain two, and it will be about third down and six. The plays that were working for big chunks of yardage, Oneida's kind of figuring out, and uh, they're playing them a little bit better. And credit our, our front four on defense for that. Unfortunately, it's the same front four that I've seen all game long, so you wonder how much this is going to wear on them. You know, they've got so many people on the other sideline, I don't know how our sideline's even holding them. Third down and five now, and we're going to have a break in the action here. 4.59 to play in the first half. We'll take the break with your score on a West Green timeout. It's the West Green Buffalo 7, the United Indians 3. One. Welcome back to Oneida High School out of a West Green timeout. Third and five for the Buffaloes. They're at their own 41-yard line. Bowles, the standing tailback. Duckett offset, wing back to the left. Here's the snap. They're looking to pass for the first time. Reinhardt with pressure. He's going to have it batted down, getting his hands on it. Tanner Boshears makes it an incomplete pass. It will be West Green with a fourth and five. Wow. On third and five, you haven't thrown a pass all night, but you roll your quarterback who is right-handed out to the left and try to get him to get a pass off in the flat. Very odd play call there by West Green. Very well played by Oneida. So now the Indians have held and set to punt for West Green will be Dustin Carter. Deep to return for Oneida, you got Toby Hood and Houston West back at the Oneida 35. Not a great deal of respect for the West Green punting game there, John. Here's a on low snap. Still on the ground. He picks it up and gets it away. Booms it. And it's angling over toward Hood. Hood's going to see it. He just didn't really have a chance at it. It's going to be jumped on back at the Oneida 17, where it's going to be first and 10 for the Indians. Didn't get it up high, did the punter, but he got it to spiral, turn over and spiral nicely, and it angled toward the, the sideline. And, man, that, was, that turned out to be a big play for West Green. Like you said, Tim, if we were a few yards deeper, maybe he's able to get back and cut that one off and, and scoop it up. But it, it was bouncing back there. So Oneida, after all this, John, they've seen West Green chew up yards, but now down just four. And they have the football right before the half, and the Indians will get the football to start the second half. Important drive here for the Oneida offense. It's going to be Cole West in the pistol formation, takes the snap, leaves it or faked it to the fullback Weber, now pitches it to Brandon Smith, 20, 25, cuts inside 30, up to the 35, out to the 37-yard nice line. That will be a gain of 19 on first down for Brandon Smith. And a nice job by the quarterback there, Tim. The sophomore, he did, he did a good job of selling the option, playing his reads, getting the pitch out timely, and a nice job by running the sideline for Brandon Smith. Made the first guy miss and got positive yardage after that. Something we haven't seen from Oneida tonight from the running back position, Tim. And credit West Green. They've shown us their sure tacklers tonight. Nice job on the option by quarterback Cole West there. And now it's going to be first and 10 Indians. West takes the snap, turns, hands it off. And it's going to be Dan and West. And I'll tell you, uh, they have certainly kept their eye on Dan and West tonight. He has not had an alley to run in. That'll be no gain on the play. Loss of maybe a little bit, a few inches. And you're right, Tim. They've sort of bottled Dannon up tonight. You can't dance back there tonight. West Green is, they're, they're playing defense well. You got to hit that hole if there is one. 
Just bust that crease and get what you can. So on second and 10, Cole West in the pistol formation. He'll call for the snap here, takes it, hands it to the fullback, Michael Weber. Weber is going to back his way up to the 39-yard line, and that will be a gain of two. And bring up a third down and eight. It's unfortunate because they brought their linebackers up, stuck them right in the middle in the gaps. And uh, the quarterback read it as a dive read. Looked like we had an option option call there to the wide side of the field, and the quarterback gave it to the dive. And unfortunately, they had it played perfectly for, for that play. Uh, if we'd have pulled it and ran the option, I don't know if we'd have got anything either, but it, it looked like something was there to the outside. So the Indians with a long third down here at their own 39-yard line, 255 and ticking. Here's the snap. Cole West looking to pass, looks, fires the pass. Complete. Houston West makes what the catch. What a catch. Houston goes up top, brings it down in West Green territory at the Buffalo 48-yard line, first and 10 Indians. That was a strike right there. The quarterback, he threw an ugly pass. It kind of ducked on him. It didn't spiral. And Houston went up, grabbed it, snared it at the highest point. Knew he was going to take a hit. Held on as he went down. Nice play. Great catch by Houston. And the Indians, wanna, they feel hot. They're going to get back up on the line. And now we're going to have a penalty here. Movement against Oneida. So that's going to knock it back across the 50 to... Indian territory and I don't know what the play I don't know if we were running a hard count to try to get them off sides or what but half of our line moved with the receivers and the quarterback but the ball didn't so I don't know who we obviously weren't on the same page so it'll be at the Oneida 48 yard line Penalty yardage, not kind tonight for Oneida. 2.20 to go, first half. Here's the snap, Cole West looking to pass again. He's going deep down the right side, looking for Houston West, just over his outstretched hands at the 30. Oh, just a misconnection there. About a yard, maybe two off. I don't think it was two yards off. It was closer it than that. It was closer to a yard. You know, he had him between the safe. He was behind the corner, and the safety just didn't have enough time to get over there. If it's just a little bit more off of the pass, you know, it's a big game for Oneida. I like the play call, getting a little bit aggressive there. Yeah, I agree with you. Those safeties have been coming up and coming up. You got to make them, you got to make them think at least you're going to try to throw it. So here we go again. Now Massengale lined up wide right, Houston West wide to the left, and on second and 15, Cole West takes the snap, looks, quick screen to Houston West, and that, we saw that work successfully earlier. This pass a little bit low. It's going to bring up third and 15. Coach Brewster throws his hands up in disgust there a little bit as he looks at his young quarterback. He knew, you know, if he could have got it up a little bit, and it's, it's sort of like a wide receiver screen. The, the wide side receiver comes back across behind the inside receiver and just runs to the inside of the field trying to catch everyone off guard and keep the, the linebackers from recovering in time, but uh, just not to be on that play. So on third and 15, Indians at their own 48-yard line in Oneida going to call a timeout to talk this over. No, I'm sorry, West Green takes a timeout. That's their fourth of the half. With timeout, the score, 2-10 to play. First half, it's the West Green Buffalo 7, the Oneida Indians 3. And 1. Welcome back to Dr. Emmy Thompson Field out of a West Green timeout. Oneida in a four-receiver set. Cole West in the shotgun. Michael Weber to his left. Oneida Indians from their own 48-yard line on third and 15. They need the 38 of West Green. Here's a heavy rush. Cole West is going to be brought down by that rush, and it's Dalton Bowles who makes the stop. So a loss on the sack of about five yards, and the Indians will be forced to punt. Yep, he was playing cornerback over here, and uh, that was a gutsy call because Houston West had no one on him. The corner came off the, off the corner blitz. Houston was wide open, but uh, the quarterback didn't have time to react. So Zach Terry's into punt, Dalton Bowles. He's at his own 38-yard line. With 130 and ticking, here's the snap. Zach gets a high hanger in the air. Bowles calls for the fair catch. It goes over his head, and Tanner Boshers will down it at the 30-yard, 31-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 West Green. Nice high punt took, took away any chance of them getting any kind of return as they come up and just fake the fair catch. Almost hit a West Green guy in the back of the hill there, Tim. So uh, nice job by the punt, 
cover team to just to put them back there. Minute 23 left before halftime. Defense has got to step up and make a stop for sure. Can't let nothing, nothing get behind you in these situations. All right, so Wes Green, we saw him attempt only one pass all night. Uh, they're out of timeouts here by our count. And Bowles isn't in, Tim. They don't have Bowles in. They have Starnes at the tailback. Here is an eye formation. Two receivers off to the right. Reinhardt, he's going to hand it off to Starnes. He's quick. Starnes is quick. Brandon Smith slows him down by grabbing him and slinging him to the turf at about the 36-yard line. Still a five-yard gain. He's a, he's a nice change of pace to Bowles, is he not? A lot quicker. And we have, looks like maybe the, is that the fullback that's down for West Green? Corey Lindsay, or is that the, the receiver Davis? It looks like Lindsay, isn't it? I believe so, Tim. And, and they've been alternating at fullback tonight between Corey Lindsay and Landon Duckett. Uh, Duckett getting the majority of the playing time, but it's almost the same for both sides. As they attend to Lindsay here, we'll take a break. 109 to play in the first half. Your score is the West Green Buffalo 7, the Oneida Indians 3. Welcome back to Oneida as I have a puzzled look on my face as, as they're marking off what looks like a 15-yard penalty against Oneida, and we're getting ready to get the call. Okay, it's going to be the uh, old horse collar tackle. Wes Green gets 15 yards on the penalty. Didn't see. This was not called before the break, so I do not understand this at all. The coaching staff over there must have did a good job of selling that one. All right, so it's first and 10, Wes Green. Here's the snap, they'll give to Bowles. Bowles trying to get to the outside. And nice job. Great tackle by Jarrett Lay, bringing Bowles down for a loss, and he's frustrated, John. He's not used to that. That is a four-yard loss for Bowles. Go ahead and throw a penalty on that tackle, too, while you're at it. Yeah, Jarrett Lay has played that corner over there very, very well tonight from his defensive end position, Tim. Just nothing has happened over there that he hasn't been in the mix tonight, seems like. So now, second and 13 for West Green. Duckett comes in motion, and Reinhardt calls for the snap. He's looking to pass. Still looking flush from the pocket. Now forward. He's going to lob it deep downfield and overthrows his intended receiver. Oh, not to have blanket coverage on Starnes as they had Houston West and Cole West all over him. And it's going to stop the clock with 18 seconds remaining, and it will be third and 12. Again, they want to roll their quarterback to the left side of their formation on the offensive side. He's a right-handed thrower. Doesn't look like he can get much on it that way. He was able to lob it down the field, but he overthrew everybody. Uh, I guess they're trying to utilize the wide side of the field when they roll him out, Tim. 18.3 left before halftime. Oneida Trail, 7-3. So you got to hold this 18 seconds, and we get the ball to start the second half. Here on third and about 12. Here's the snap. It's okay to play a little bit Ryan deep Ryan Hart looking deep down the left side, puts it up in the air, and Houston West knocks it away. Good job by Houston as he was singled up against Austin Davis. Houston, I thought he had another interception, Tim. He had it lined up, but the receiver played it well. A little bit taller than Houston. He came back underneath Houston, almost caught it. Houston was able to knock it down to the ground at the last moment, however, and break up the play. So nice job by both. And not much time went off the clock. 11.4 still. 11.4 for West Green, and it's fourth down and 13. They're at their own 48-yard line. It will be. We have timeouts, and they're going to go for it. Yep, they're going for it. Wow, that's interesting. One big play, and our, our, we got a strong leg. Reinhardt has four receivers, takes the snap, and he's going to give it on the draw to Bowles. Bowles is going to fight forward to about the 45. A flag comes Bowles down with four, three seconds remaining. And what will it be? Indians stop him on fourth down. That's the flag is once again against Oneida. I think it's going to be holding, Tim. Well, we'll decline that and run a play, right? Illegal block against West Green. You back them up, they're going to for sure punt it, so you well, better. It'll, it'll be a replay of the down. You got 2.3 to try to make something happen. And we'll go back. That, that chop block, that was the second one of the night that we've seen against West Green, Tim. And uh, the earlier one, we saw an injured player for – for Oneida Trevor Allen that went out for a few plays. We, we'll go ahead and tell the folks at home that he is back in there for Oneida, so that's good to see. Looked like his ankle was something he was 
kind of favoring. So the Indians with two seconds to go. Down by four. They're not in a kneel formation. They're in a shotgun here. And Cole West, two safeties deep. Cole dropping to his right. Plants, looks forward. Now he's going to run with it and going to be brought down. And it's going to be Corey Turner making the stop. And that's the end of the first half of action. We'll take the break after telling you the score here at halftime. It's the West Green Buffalo 7, the Oneida Indians 3. And 1. Welcome back to Dr. Emmy Thompson Field here at halftime. John, the Oneida Indians trail the West Green Buffalo 7-3. West Green's first possession was a fumble. Their second possession was a touchdown. Uh, they turned it over later in the game, and it turned into Oneida three points. But uh, it's been two teams trying to grind it out and gain the advantage. A four-point difference separates them, and the Indians will have the football to start the second half as West Green's coach has an extended conversation with the referee here as halftime is working its way. Yeah, Tim, and, and it was a grinded out kind of first half, and that's, that's exactly how uh, Coach Brewster alluded that he thought this game would be kind of a, a, uh, a slugfest, if you will, on the up front portion of the defense and offensive sides, and both sides have sort of had a go at it. And Oneida was given two big gifts by fumbles that were created, that were given to them, I should say, and created by Oneida deep in West Green territory and were not, unable to come away, but with three points on both of those turnovers. West Green was benefited by a couple of bad penalties on Oneida's part, 15 yarders, uh, unsportsman likes, and their 67 yard drive for, for their lone score. So if Oneida can cut down the mistakes, take care of the football, make hay out of their mistakes. I mean, that, that's, that's the basics to football, is it not? And uh, we've had our opportunities, just unfortunate that we've only got three points at halftime. The Indians hanging in with a pretty good and a playoff yeah. uh, triple-A team. No no shame in this right now. And I, uh, it should be a good second half coming up. Brought to you by Brennan's Foot and Ankle Care, Miller & Son Concrete and Paving, McDonald's of Oneida, Hometown Furniture, Cell Depot, B&B Roofing and Metals, Marlers Auto Mart, Mountain People's Health Council, Rainbow Ford, Plateau Drugs, and the Stand Program. We'll continue with the halftime, uh, the CFB Financial Halftime Report, scoring statistics and more on the way. Your halftime score, the West Green Buffaloes 7, the Oneida Indians 3. Okay, 2 and 1. Here at Dr. Emmy Thompson Field Halftime, the CFB Financial Halftime Report, our scoring recap for you. The Indians recover a fumble on West Green's first possession. Indians are unable to move it, but set up for a 40-yard field goal attempt that had plenty of leg, but was off to the left from Douglas Manning. So with 8.03 to play in the first quarter, it was nothing, nothing. The ensuing possession for West Green produced the only touchdown of the game as Dalton Bowles took it in after a long drive from the Buffaloes. Three yards out, Trevor Wilson with the extra point, and it was 7-0 West Green with 4-14 to play in the first quarter. Oneida would be the only team to score in the second quarter as they recovered a West Green fumble deep in their territory, drove within the West Green 20-yard line, and then settled for a 26-yard field goal from Douglas Manning. That 26-yard field goal with 6.59 to play in the first half made it West Green 7 and Oneida 3. And that's where we stand here at the half with West Green in the lead by 4. We'll take a break. When we return, it'll be statistics here on the CFB Financial Halftime Report. Your score one more time, the West Green Buffalo 7, the Oneida Indians 3. Welcome back to Oneida High School. Right now, the West Green Buffaloes leading the Indians here at halftime by a score of seven to three. Taking a look at our first half stats, uh, looking at first downs, West Green with eight, Oneida with only four. Rushing yards for the Indians. Uh, Oneida 53 yards, West Green 115. Passing yards, Oneida with 20, West Green with zero. Uh, the reason for that is on the pass attempts, Oneida has attempted five passes, completed two of those. West Green not completed any out of only three attempts. Total yardage so far for West Green, uh, 115 yards, and Oneida, 53. Or, pardon me, 73. Uh, West Green has fumbled the ball four times and lost two of those. 
uh, for and threw an interception. So three turnovers so far for West Green. Oneida doing a fine job tonight. Uh, not turning the ball over either time so far on passes or runs. Time of possession, West Green 12 minutes, 44 seconds, and Oneida 11 minutes, 16 seconds. Once again, your score here at halftime is the West Green Buffalo 7, Oneida. Welcome back to Oneida here at halftime. West Green leads the Indians 7-3. to I want to remind everybody, if uh, you can't listen to us here on the radio, you can catch us on facebook.com keep up with us and it's an excellent opportunity if you have friends or relatives outside of the area outside our broadcast signal they can keep up with it there it's facebook.com ohs indian radio or on twitter at ohs radio last week in our pick segment uh everybody uh, did pretty good or what pick segment oh I talking too fast sandwich. trying to get, cram his stuff in right quick <laughs> uh we did real Especially considering the first week, not knowing exactly what everybody's going to do. We finished four and one last week, everybody. Uh, so uh, starting reason. off this week, it's definitely going to get jammed up because I think there's only one game that everybody agreed on, and we all agree that Cofield will defeat Cloudland. Yeah, I started to say, though, uh, Cofield's the one that we all lost last week, right? Yeah, they, they lost to Pigeon Forge last week. And Pigeon Forge apparently has got a pretty good team this year. Uh, Oliver Springs at Greenback tonight. Tim's going with Greenback, and John and myself think Oliver Springs is going to get that one. You want to comment on that one, why you picked that that way, Tim? Why I picked Greenback? Yeah. They're at home. I was, I was impressed. Coming with, off a of nice win. I was impressed with them last week. Uh, Oliver but Springs. But you didn't see Oliver Springs. They almost beat Kingston. Heartbreaker against Kingston. Um, I, just, I feel like Richard Seymour is going to get it done again at home for Greenback, and you'll find out that's how it's going to play out. Uh, the other game is North Green at Jellico. I'm taking Jellico, and John and Tim are taking North Green. I guess you guys figure that road trip's not going to wear them out. Actually, we both know Jellico to be inferior to North Green. <laughs> how about if we say it that way? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but you're going with Jellico, and I admire that. Jellico. That's stepping out there, not afraid. Yeah, we'll see tomorrow. We'll have to make comment that, ten, that Kevin always picks the games we pick, by the way. Always. Yes, he chooses But them. I give them to you guys ahead of time. So That's you true. Can. But you select what we're going to pick. So well, go ahead. Go, go on. Guy that searches down every stat known to man. Any, any port in a storm, right? <laughs> Farragut at Oak Ridge. Tim and John are taking Oak Ridge, and I'm picking Farragut. So I guess I'm out on a limb on that one, too. Feeling right? a little bit lonely, aren't you? No. Why you got the Admirals? Why? Because I feel they're a better team this year than Oak Ridge. That's pretty simple. <laughs> we'll see. It would have to be. We'll see. Uh, Austin East at Powell. John's going with Austin East, and Tim and myself are taking Powell. Hey, Hunch. John L., you know, spent a lot of time at Austin East. Continue. <laughs> And the big game that's going to be played. I want, Anyhow, I want to say one thing about the big game here, Maryville Alcoa. That, I'm sorry, <laughs> I stole your thunder, but no, no, you we're going to allow our followers on uh, Facebook.com to chime in their thoughts on that as well at OHS Indian Radio. Uh, you can participate in the poll question. We'll have one game each week. You try to pick against us or pick with us, and we'll see what everybody thinks on this next one. So go ahead. That'll be real good. Uh, Maryville at Alcoa. Uh, throw all of the classifications out the window. These are the top couple of teams in the state going head to head. Are they not garnering national television no. for this game? <laughs> no, uh, no, they're not. They're garnering local. They're, I think they're going to they be on Channel 8. Network, actually, I, they're actually, network I television. I think it's going to be regionally te televised. Right. Uh, John and myself are taking Maryville. Tim is going with the winner of the last couple of years, Alcoa. Maryville supposedly has maybe one of the best teams they've, they've ever had. Uh, very senior laden, um, and also top ten in the country right now. So apparently Tim didn't get that memo. <laughs> oh, I, I'm I'm but I'm aware I'm of that. I'm saying all that to say this, but Alcoa is Alcoa every year. They just reload. They're going for what eight in a row state championship wise. Yeah, this will be their eighth in a row. So uh, it, there you go. Throw it all out the window when they line up. It well, and matter. you're right. You know, that's one of those rivalry games. It doesn't matter how good they are. They're going to butt heads in that one no matter what's going on. All right, so you can vote on that one online as well, uh, that one to take place tomorrow night. We, we'll try to post all of them next week so that you can uh, 
You can so vote everybody on those. can be better than us. Right. So we didn't do it this week because, you know, people like Jerry Lay, who's our spotter, he might be on Coach T at halftime and check the scores. And then I think he does that. Somehow he cheats in the paper picks, too, I've because he was ahead of me. I think he only missed two last week. I've heard that. And last week we asked a question just out of interest. Who was the farthest one that would respond in that was listening or following us along on Facebook? And we had one lady from Jacksonville, Florida, that I, said they was following the game. That was no lady. That was my cousin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still pretty neat. We had Crossville, Nashville. And so, you know, well, once again, that's a great way if you're out of the area, keep up with what's going on live that night. We have more people on Facebook than we have listening right now. <laughs> that, that's got to be true because my mom and dad are here, so pretty well, much our, our listening we, audience is shot. Saving grace, is, no, they'll catch us because oh, we're yeah. tape delay. That's right. So well, they'll, get, they'll get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> really. All right, it's halftime. We're going to take a break when we return. Second half of action under the lights. It's gotten dark here at halftime, and we're ready for two more quarters of football. The Indians will get it first, and they need it because they trail your score. It's the West Green Buffalo 7 and the Oneida Indians 3. 2 and 1. Welcome back to Oneida. Dr. Emmy Thompson Field getting ready for second half action as West Green leads Oneida. Seven to three. Captains are on the field, and Oneida should take the ball as they do. They'll be defending the south goal, Tim. Or I should say, yes, defending the south goal. There you go. And we're getting ready for second half action. So uh, West Green will be defending the south goal. Yes. yes. Thank you. So Oneida will be traveling left to right as you view your dial. Doesn't happen often, but sometimes I'm speechless. It's okay. Be interesting coming out of half to see what adjustments were made by both teams. Oneida did a good job defensively after that scoring drive by West Green to really shut down West Green. So uh, let's see if we can garner the, the lead here on our opening drive in the second half. Set to kick it off for West Green will be Dustin Carter. Deep to return for Onada Houston West. Also Adam Massingale, Toby Hood back there. Here's the kick from Carter, and it's going to be fielded by the Indians at their own 30-yard line. One of the up men, Tanner Boshier, John, that came at him so fast, he didn't have time. He, he was caught between fair catching it, and then he realized it was a line drive. Then he fielded it and went to a knee. It just all happened so fast, yeah. and he's, he's not supposed to be the return man, but Tanner fielded it nicely. Most Indians will have it first and 10 at their own yeah. 30. Most of those up backs, you know, on those pooch kicks, they're, they're coached on those high pooch kicks. Go ahead and do a fair catch. Take a knee if you grab it. We don't want any fumbles there. But uh, that, like you said, it came at him so fast he fielded it. He would have had a sure 10, 15 yards if he have took off running. So now Cole West and the Indians set up first to 10 at their own 30. Here is Bo Shears moving from the left side of the line to the right side at tight end. The snap. The fake, Bang, what fake a block. To the fullback. It's going to be Brandon Smith getting blocks to the outside. 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. Down to the 35, to the 30, and down to the 26-yard line as Brandon lowers the shoulder, delivers some punishment, and here's a late flag. Could it be finally won against the Buffalo? It should be a pile on. I wanted to say it, but I thought I'd stay off the referees, especially the first play of the second half. I don't know who it was that pulled around that corner and leveled the linebacker right there to Spring Hill on that edge. I think it might have been, was it 54 that, that pulled in that situation? That's what they're telling me behind me. Number 54 is Dustin Laxton. And I'm telling you what, folks, that was a textbook clean out right there. Hello, darling, for sure, with what Mark Matthews would have said years ago. Man, what a block. Well, it looks like the Indian Brain Trust found something at halftime that they thought would work, and they come out and unwrap it on the first play. And after that penalty, it's going to be first and 10 Indians at the West Green 13-yard line. Indians with a first and 10 at the West Green 13, and here is going to be Brandon Smith this time off the left side, and he is going to be swallowed up maybe uh, it's no gain on the play is what it looks like. Again, going with the – is an off is an off tackle play, off guard play, if you will, and they're pulling. Oneida's pulling their weak side guard and tackle trying to spring something here. So with 11.20 to go, Oneida down by four. It is 7-3 West Green. Indians trying to get their first lead of the game. 
as they have a second and 10 at the West Green 13-yard line. Cole West takes the snap, fakes the give to Weber. Now Cole's going to tuck it. He's going to run, and he's going to vault forward down to about the 6, maybe the 7. We'll see where the spot is, but it's going to be a sizable gain for West. He'll pick up 8, and it'll be third down and 2. Young quarterback doing a nice job. Picked up some yardage. It was it was a it was a triple option. He saw the dive. He read it correctly, pulled the ball, took it to the outside. May have got a little too wide. Try to duck it back in. You got your running back out there as a pitch option. Might have got into the end zone right there with Bear running the running back play, but the quarterback decides to keep it. Still a nice game. Third down three for the Indians. Weber offset to the right. Smith the tailback, and here's Cole West with the snap. Fakes it to Weber, fakes the pitch. Now trying to break to the outside. Now cuts back against the grain. He's got room to run. He's calling for a block. Bang! He gets it, and it's going to be Cole West extending into the end zone. Touchdown, and he took out the ref. Touchdown, Cole West. That's going to be a seven-yard touchdown run. The official is down, and he's not getting up. So I said that quickly, and I did not mean that in jest. So let's hope the official does bounce back up here. He's down. They're going to have to attend to him over there in the end zone. Well, Cole was running uh, in a busted play, and he picked up a block from the receiver on that side. I think it was Houston West over there. Set him up, did Houston. And, uh, and, and then Cole extending the referee backpedaling, trying to get out of the way, but Cole, as he dove and got the pylon, he also fell into the knee, shin area of the official. It was the upper leg, yeah, the knee or above, Tim. And, and the official was trying to stay behind that pylon over there, you know, on the sideline and, and watch Cole to see if he broke the, the plane into the, the goal line. The problem was when Cole extended toward the pylon, he actually rolled up the official, and uh, we hope he bounces back. That, that, that's, that's tough to see. You know, these guys uh, put up with a lot of abuse from people like sure you, John. Yes, they do. And they come out here and they don't get paid very much. And without them, we couldn't have this game. Hey, he, he fell in the line of duty. That's all I can say right one, there. One because of the, he, he did a good job of, I think he would have made the call even on his butt back there as he gets knocked down. But the other official stepped up and made the call for him. And... Uh, I'm not sure. They just handed me a list of the officials for tonight's game, and I'm not sure. I believe he would be classified as um, the line judge, possibly, or the either, linesman. Either the linesman or line judge, probably. So we're not going to throw a name out here, but we do hope that, that he is okay and he bounces back from him. He is being treated still. The The – Important news, the Indians have taken a lead. Onada is up 9-7, to nice seven, regardless really of nice what drive. happens here. They'll attempt the extra point from Douglas Manning, and Onada's first possession of the second half worked out pretty good as the Indians have made halftime adjustments. Long-standing tradition, John, for Onada coaching staff to make their moves, make, make their uh, improvements at halftime, and... Uh, it appears that has happened at least for now. West Green, I'm sure, has a way to counter. And, and they do. And it's probably the young man that's, that's, that resides in the backfield for them at running back, uh, you know, uh, Dalton Bowles. And, and he, is a, he is a potent weapon. I, I don't remember how many yards he had at halftime. I didn't really get that stat. I need to look that up. But I know it was a bunch, and he's the main cog of their offense. And uh, you know they're going to rely on him. Now, the, kind, the good thing about grabbing the lead here and if we could tack on any more, that would be even more to Oneida's benefit. They haven't showed us the ability to throw as West Green or be quick strike, if you will. So Oneida needs to put the pressure on them by, by building on this lead. So the extra point attempt will be Douglas Manning. The holder will be Adam Massengale. The official's going to gut it out here, John. That's going to be tough for him on these run plays. Uh, but... He'll stay out there. 10-13 to play third quarter. Here's the snap, the hold. The kick from Manning oh. is good. Time out on the field, your score. 10-13 to play in the third quarter. It's Oneida 10, West Green 7. Two and one. Welcome back to Oneida. We can tell you as Oneida gets set to kick off, the opening drive was a success for Oneida in the second half, and Oneida's taking the lead 10-7 over visiting West Green. 10-13 left in the third quarter clock. And Tim, we can tell you 
We mentioned Trevor Allen right before halftime. He's out of pads on the sideline right now to start the second half. Douglas Manning's going to kick it off. Here's a deep kick. Bowles working to his left. It bounces off his shoulder pads. He's whirling it. He fumbled it. The Indians have it. Bowles tried to pick it up and run with it, and Houston West slips in and recovers it at the 10. Oh, the wheels, the wheels. They're coming off for West Green right now. Oneida's got some momentum. They got the lead. They got a quick strike on their first drive to start the second half, and now this turnover. The third one of the night by West Green deep in their own territory. Oneida's only been able to capitalize with three points on the first two. Can they do anything here? All right. It's actually the 12-yard line. My mistake. What a weapon we have at kicker right now. Yeah, I he's mean, booming them. I mean, he just he's doing nothing but giving us good field position and uh, turnovers help as well. So the Indians getting some confidence here. Grab their first lead. Now have the ball at the West Green 12. Cole West is going to call for the snap. Turns, hands it off. It's going to be Dannon West up the middle. He's to the 10. Still on his feet. Dannon down to the seven. That'll be a gain of about five for Dannon West. And the play calling from Oneida is changing things up now. Misdirection that play. The first drive was a whole lot of that. Misdirection, pulling the guards and the tackles from the weak side, trying to overflow to side, uh, overflow or, or flood a side with blockers. And they're just getting big chunks right now. West Green's a little bit off balance. They've, they put their safeties back deep again. They're not walking them up like they were in the first half. Second and five, Indians at the seven of West Green. Here's the snap. The hand to the fullback, Jarrett Lay, bangs Ouch. forward inside the five and down to the four. Looked like it was a read play there. Jarrett got some pretty good yards, very close to a first down. But if he pulls that play, the option might be available to the outside as well. Everything's crashing in. When West Green sees the dive play, they're crashing hard to the inside. That's why the option's working well to the outside. So now a third and one at the West Green four-yard line for the Oneida Indians. Oneida leads 10-7. It's been a very good third quarter. It's only three minutes old here, John. Very good for Oneida. Cole West in the pistol. Jarrett Lay in motion. Toby Hood standing back there. They give us to Hood following Jarrett Lay, driving his legs forward. Touchdown, Toby Hood. Oh, yeah. What a beautiful blocking scheme they had going on right there. The fullback got him some. The running back just had to pick his way to the end zone. The front five for Oneida offensively so far in the second half have had their way. It wasn't that way in the first half. Adjustments, we talked about them before. Oneida has definitely made them coming out here at the second half. And now the Indians extra point from Douglas Manning. The hold from Massengill, the kick from Manning is on the way and this kick is good. Time it on the field, your score as we take the break is the Oneida Indians. 17 in the West Green Buffaloes, seven. Two and one. Welcome back to Oneida, Dr. Emmy Thompson Field. We can tell you Oneida has struck again the second time in the second half. They have 17 points on the board to West Green, seven, 8.46 left to play in the third quarter. Oneida set to kick off once again. Bowles is not the deep man for this return. It will be Manning to kick it off. Here is the kick, end over ending, driving, then it's going to go through the end zone for a touchback. I said it a couple times tonight, and I said it last week. Oneida has themselves a weapon at kicker. Well, and it just I, changes you know, things John, it so much. It really very much could have led to that last seven points, just that uh, that deep kick. You know, and we, we saw it, unfortunately, last week, a kickoff return. You know, he, he did, all he did was kick it to the goal line last week, and the guy was able to take it almost 98 yards for the return. So uh, he did his job there as well. It, it, it just flips the field. When someone has to start from the 20 or the 15 instead of the 30 or 40, it, it, it works in your favor as the night progresses. Reinhardt under center, and you don't have bowls at tailback either. Here's the give to Starnes, looking for that speed out the right side, and Starnes, he's going to pick up about five yards maybe just short of five yards on first down and it'll be second and five for west green and john uh the the buffaloes offense when last they were on the field they were up by four they now step on the field down 10. and you know and we alluded to this earlier tim oneida they've got them down by at least two scores now so the pressure's kind of on this offense that that really doesn't get Big chunks of yardage, doesn't score quick. They like to gr 
do a ground control type of game. This kind of puts the pressure on West Green. Heath Starnes remains the tailback on second and five from their own 25. Here's the snap. Give the Starnes off the left side. He's going to be hit and wrapped up after a gain of maybe one, maybe two. Better job by O'Night in the second half of doing just that, Tim. You said it, wrapping up. Get your arms around that running back, and help is coming. Everybody's crashing down toward the ball. Not like we saw so much in the first half. Now Dalton Bowles returns after fumbling that kickoff. Now they wanted to get him mad. And on third and three, they feel like they want him to take his anger out on the Indians right here. Third and three. West Green at their own 27-yard line. Let's see what happens. I don't know if they wanted to get him mad or if the coach was so mad he didn't want him to play. The fullback is Landon Duckett. Bowles behind him on third and three. Reinhardt the snap. Turns, hands to Bowles. Bowles has a... Does not have it. Reinhardt fakes Bang! it, and Reinhardt runs it, gets pumped. He didn't get no first down either. There's no way. It's awfully close, John, looking at the spot, but it looks like he should be just short. Wow, they're going to give it to him on the spot. That's another generous spot. I know it's across the field, but, man, we came up and stuck him, and it looked like it was short of the 30. And the guys over there on the defensive front, they're throwing their arms up going, you know, what's up with that? They just barely made it. Bowles remains in at the tailback position now on first and ten. Seven minutes to play third quarter. Reinhardt under center. Two receivers to the right. Reinhardt takes the snap, turns, hands to Bowles. Bowles stutter steps, Bang. jumps, and then he's hit by Tanner Boshears at the 35-yard line. They're going to spot it, I'm sorry, at the 36, and that's going to be a gain of six for Bowles. This official over here on our side, he is the worst Never mind. Spot man. Yes, well, maybe, there you go. Maybe, uh, maybe it's going both right. ways. He he's bad. It's going to be second down and four for the West Green Buffaloes. Bowles remains hey, the we're, tailback. We're flying around now. We're doing some sticking. West Green running from right to left as you view your dial at their own 36 with a second and four. Reinhardt takes the snap. He's looking to pass. Rolling to his left. Tucks it. He's going to run. Wants to run it. And he's going to be stacked up and brought down. Oh. He, he picked up one. That's that's a penalty right there. Number 78 for West Green comes in and just about wipes it. He's just looking to wipe out anybody. He's diving with his head. And Zach Terry's holding his right arm, John. He's going to come off. Jarrett Lay's coming in for him. Is that, and I think that was in the area where you, what you were talking about. Now he's shaking that, it off. They've already like. been busted for that penalty twice tonight has West Green. All he was doing is trying to hurt somebody right there. So now it's going to be third down. They gave him two on that. It's going to be third down and two. Unbelievable. 5.30 and ticking. Here's a big third down. The Indians would like to get a stop here. I think you could bring your linebackers up here and take a chance. Bowles is going to go off, off tackle right here. Bowles is the tailback. A flag comes down if this is a delay of game, and it is. That is a huge penalty against West Green. On a third and two, it now becomes a third and five. Make it seven. Make it seven. Thank you. <laughs> Tim is manning our computer tonight, folks, and Tim does a great job, as you all know, doing the play-by-play. -play. He's the best there is at what he does in the local area. I'll just say it. <laughs> and uh, he's also he's also keeping. You got to narrow it down some more. In the local area <laughs> on WBNT for Oneida football, that's a loss of five. It's going to be third and but seven. But he's manning the computer, keeping up with Twitter and Facebook, and calling it play by play. Here is going to be Reinhardt on this third and long. He takes the snap, rolling to his right. Back. He's looking to pass. He fires, and it's going to be complete as the receiver Bang. curled up past the sticks. He's fighting forward. The Indians are going no to whistle. stack him up here. The receivers, Austin Davis and West Green, completes the pass for a first down. They did a good job there of getting the first down and keeping this drive alive. Oneida's wanting to get off the field defensively and get it back into their offense's hands, who's been making a lot of things happen good for Oneida. 14 points on, on their first two drives in the second half and wanting to put this thing away. West Green, not so fast, they say, as they keep the drive alive on a third and seven. Well, it's a good thing he came open because if he had to wait much longer, uh, They're not keeping him in the pocket. You had Tanner Boshears breathing down the back of his neck. They're not keeping him in the pocket. They're rolling him left or right every time they want to throw. So here we go from the I formation. First and 10 at their own 42 with 449 and ticking in the third. Reinhardt takes the snap, hands it to Bowles. Big hole in the middle. Bowles driving forward. He's going to pick up. Uh, I like the official spot from the other side here. He's going to. 
He's going to be two yards behind where the official on the near side was going to spot it. It'll be on the west green side of the 50. It's still a gain of eight. This official is never where the ball carrier is. He can't keep up with him, and he's making a horrible spot every time. So second down and two, West Green quickly on the ball, just their side of the 50. Bowles remains the tailback here. Reinhardt takes the snap, turns, hands to Bowles. Bowles, big hole. Now he's going to break it out to the right side. Cole West going to bring him down, and it's a good thing he did because Cole was the last thing between him and the end zone, but it's Bowles up to the Oneida 32. Finding, finding some good things for for uh, West Green are they at the offensive front going off that right side on the offense our defense like I said we're a little bit thin we got a couple injured players on the sideline coming out of halftime so our guys are going to have to stick it up we you know it is what it is right now and Oneida's got to be tough some third down plays that went for West Green and they converted to keep this drive alive that's what this is going to go back to Oneida cannot get off the field defensively so now first and ten the Buffaloes on the ball with a eye formation Reinhardt takes the snap, turns, a little misdirection, and this is going to be Bowles again. Sheds one tackle, now trying to get to the outside. He sheds another one, looking for blockers, cuts it back inside all the way down to the 12-yard line where it's going to be first and 10. And now just got, they got to do a better job up front. The, the front four, they're getting winded. They're getting tired. They're getting beat on a little bit, and that's where it's happening. You know, we're, 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 we're relegated to keeping our – our, our linebackers back at depth, we're not bringing them up. We're showing stunt, but we're not bringing them up. And now Oneida wants to talk about it right now. Maybe to, more than anything, maybe to give us a rest. 3.26 to go in the third quarter. Timeout Indians, your score. It's Oneida 17, West Green 7. Two and one. Welcome back, Dr. Emmy Thompson Field here in Oneida. 3.26 left to play in the third quarter. Oneida leads 17 to seven, but West Green is driving. They've had a good drive so far, Tim, and they're looking to strike back. 3.26 to go. First and 10, West Green. Did Oneida make the right calls here? Here's the snap. They give to Dalton Bowles. He'll bang forward inside the 10. And uh, they like running to this side. That's going to take it all the way down to the five. That'll be a gain of seven. That right side, they are just wearing it out. You could almost take both your linebackers and say, come on, put them over on the right side because that's the side they want to run behind. It may be their strong side. They've got a lot of meat over there on that side. So it's second and four at the Oneida five. Bowles remains the tailback. Here is Reinhardt under center. He'll take the snap, turns, hands it to Bowles. Bowles through the middle and into the end zone. Touchdown, West Green. They're just having their way with Oneida's front right now. Really are, Tim. So the Indians will see West Green quickly line up and attempt the extra point. Trevor Wilson, a freshman kicker here for West Green as they tra trail 17-13, going to try to cut it to three. Reinhardt is the holder. They've been a little bit shaky on this. Calls four. for the snap. The kick from Wilson is on the way, and the kick is good. Timeout on the field. Your score, 247 to play in the third quarter, and it is Oneida 17, West Green 14. And one. Once again, back at Oneida, we're getting set for another kickoff. This time it'll be West Green after their scoring drive goes 80 yards and 11 plays. Mr. Bowles, he's 23 carries for 151 yards right now and two touchdowns. We told you he was a good one. 247, like I said, in the, in the third quarter left to play. So we got a long way to go in a 17-14 game with Oneida in the lead. Set to kick it off will be Dustin Carter for West Green. Carter's kick. In over ending, here is Massengale. He'll fill it at the 18, to the 20, to the 25. 35-40, oh! cuts outside, 45, stumbles to the 50, to the 45 oh. of West Green. Adam Massengale with a big kickoff return, and the Indians with good field position to start their third possession of the second half. Oh, so close. Oh, so close. The kicker who is a man of large size, was able to slow him down just enough for one of the speedy guys to get back and get an angle on Massengale, or he was gone. He had actually two guys in front of him, way up in front of him, too far. They should have came back to him and blocked for him. But hey, we'll take it. We'll start, the, we'll start any drive like this. We're getting that good spot. I said 45, he put it up at the 44. Indians 
First and 10 at their own 44, or at the West Green 44-yard line. Here's Cole West taking the snap, turns, hands it off. It's going to be Dan and West shedding the first tackler, diving forward. He's got first down yardage to the West Green 34-yard line. A sluggish first half, which we saw as a 7-3 ball game. Really, both offensives kind of struggling has now turned into a... What, are you kidding me? That's got to be a measurement. Has turned into a run fest for both offenses. They are, they are going to measure it. I thought there was no question he got that. Unbelievable. Like I said, like I said, the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> Till next week, 2:16 to play in the third quarter. Onada leads 17 to 14. I meant just specifically spotting the ball. It's going to be short. Hey, this, I mean, this is big. I mean, I know it's short, but we want to we want to work off a first down to stick. Yep, it's inches short, and that. So Onada is going to have it first or second and inches at the West Green 35-yard line. Indians break huddle, clock will restart. This is one of those plays where you maybe have two play called out of the huddle. If that safety wants to come up, take your shot. Well, we're not under center. It's gonna be Cole West. He'll take the snap, he'll hand it to the fullback. Oh, it's first fumbled. down, Weber up to the 32-yard line. Weber took a shot from a guy diving in from the outside, and that ball juggled just for an instant. Weber was able to put a handle on it and move the sticks once again. First down, Oneida. So it'll be at the West Green 32-yard line. Oneida giving West Green a little bit of their own medicine on this time-controlled, ball-controlled kind of offense on this drive. 145 and ticking, Cole West. On first and 10, he'll take the snap, turns, fakes the fullback, gives to Dan and West, and he's going to be hit and slung down. That's a good play by Corey Lindsey there. Lindsey brings Dan and West down for the loss, for the loss of two. Yeah, those kind of plays come back to haunt us on first down when we don't get any positive yardage or even lose yardage. It puts us in bad situations for the rest of the series. So let's see how Oneida responds. 114 and ticking. We are in the fast moving third quarter. It's been kind to Oneida. Indians scored 14 points this quarter and they lead 17 14. And now on second and 12, Oneida at the 34 of West Green. Cole West takes the snap. He's looking to pass. He's got looking it. down the right side. Pass complete to West at the 15. He's to the 10. He's to the 5. Touchdown, Indians. Oh, they set him up. Looks like they were going to throw to the left side of the field. The safety, he cheated. He got busted for it. That is a 44-yard touchdown pass. They threw it right in the soft spot between the safety and the corner. Looked like they were kind of playing some kind of zone. Maybe the coaches upstairs have read that or the coaches downstairs, and we threw it right into that soft spot. Nice to see that adjustment, John, and the Indians. 34 yards, by the way, on the touchdown pass. The extra point attempt from Douglas Manning is on the way, and this kick is good. Timeout on the field, your score. The Oneida Indians 24, the West Green Buffaloes 14. That was nice. And one. Welcome back to Oneida, Dr. Emmy Thompson Field. If I had $5 for every time I've said that in the last little bit, I'd be, well, had a few bucks. We've had, this third <laughs> quarter has been very kind. Indians three touchdowns in the third quarter. It was seven to three at halftime. It is 24 to 14 now with Oneida in the lead. 52 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Manning kick off. It's going to be end of Randy. And Bowles going to field it in the end zone for a touchback. The weapon. That's what we'll call him. And so four touchdowns this quarter, John. Why not? Three for Onata, one for I'm West Green. I'm done with, though. We don't have to have another one at least right now. 51 seconds remaining in the third. West Green, first and 10 at their own 20. Unfortunately, our last driving, it went for four plays, 44 yards, and only three minutes did our defense get a set out. So uh, that's the only bad thing. Our defense has to come right back to face an offense by West Green that was clicking on their last drive of 80 yards and a, and a score. Corey Lindsey, the fullback, leading for Dalton Bowles. Two receivers off to the right, and now West Green will hand it off to Bowles. There's room in the middle. He skips over one. Adam Massengill takes him on. 
Bowles going to be brought down at the 28-yard line, gain of eight. Just chunks of yardage is Bowles ripping off right now, Tim. And Oneida's defense is sort of in a bend, not break mentality. Unfortunately, last time we gave up a score after a long drive, and our defense was sucking a little bit of air and, and a little bit gas, to be honest. All right, second down and two. West Green at their own 28-yard line. Reinhardt. Bowles still back there is the snap. They give to Bowles, looking, finding, room to run, Gotta cuts it in. outside, and one man to beat. Toby Hood's going to wrap him up, but not before Bowles gets to the Oneida 44-yard line with another first and 10. The little engine that could. He just he just seems to get stronger as the game goes on, Tim, and that reason is, is the young man is in probably tremendous shape physically and uh you know, as everyone gets tired around him, he just shines, and that's what the good athletes do. That will be the end of the third quarter when we return. With one quarter to play, your score will be the Oneida Indians 24, the West Green Buffaloes 14. And one. Welcome back, folks. Dr. Emmy Thompson Field here in Oneida. Getting ready to start the fourth and maybe the final quarter. We went to overtime last week. 24 to 14 is the score Oneida leads. West Green is driving. They're on the Oneida side of the field with a first down on about the Oneida 44 yard line. So West Green now has Starnes in at tailback. Going to rest up Dalton Bowles for a couple of plays. Off that edge now. We got to be careful here. And they return Duckett to fullback on first and 10 at the Oneida 44. Here's Starnes trying to get to the outside, and he's going to cut it back inside, and he'll be brought down, but not before he gains about nine yards. Whoa, a little bit of kicking going on in the pile. Got to be careful there. The officials are doing a good job, though, getting on the pile and watching for those things. I will say that. But eight yards again on first down for West Green. Actually, they're just, yeah, eight. They're just ripping off eight and seven yard plays every time, Tim, and our defense has got to stand up and resist a little bit. It will be Starnes, the tailback steal with 11-25 and ticking here in the fourth quarter. Reinhardt under center, gonna take the snap, hands it off, and this is gonna be, is that Starnes again, wrapped up this time at the line, no gain on the play. Actually, I think it was the fullback, John Corey Lindsay. It's hard to tell, they're 10 and 20. Nope, that was Starnes. That was the quick guy, but you can't be quick if you're in the arms of the defensive end. And in that case, it was uh, Adam Young, I wow. believe, who hit Bowles him, a loss on, of one. Bowles was coming onto the field, but they jerked him back to the coaching staff. A lot, a lot of time going on here. They're, they're substituting everybody. Now Bowles is coming back again. Third down and three, West Green at the Oneida 37-yard line. They broke the huddle with 12. They it, broke the huddle with 12. And it's a power eye formation. Bowles. And we have a timeout. They knew they did. Timeout West Green to avoid that penalty. 10-31 to play in the game. We'll take the break with your score. It's the Oneida Indians 24, the West Green Buffaloes 14. Is that on a penalty? And one. Okay, folks, you've heard it several times in the last few minutes, but welcome back to Dr. Emmy Thompson Field here in Oneida. 10-31 showing on the fourth quarter clock. Oneida leads 24 to 14. Off a timeout by West Green, where I thought there should have been a penalty called when they broke the huddle with 12. 10 thinks that they had to, they actually have to snap. I, I, don't, I mean, I was just, we're, I was offering kinda, that as a reason why they didn't call the penalty. I don't know. I think it's because they're bad. Score of interest that they have. Coalfield, Interesting score, Coalfield in that long trip to Cloudland. It's going to seem shorter. They're up 54 nothing right now. Who'd you pick in tonight. that? I thought Coalfield was at home. Maybe they are. They are, Cloudland oh, okay. and Coalfield. Well, long trip home to Roan Mountain for those guys. Third down and three. Reinhardt under center, the power eye behind him on third and three. He takes the snap, hands it to Bowles. Bowles has a first down. He's into the secondary, and he's going to try to break it out to the left. He's still on his feet, brought down here, down around the 20. And so that power eye, very effective here for the West Green Buffaloes. Actually, they're going to spot it at the 22. Clock stops with 10-19 to play. We'll wrap up the third quarter with the stats, Tim, that's been handed down to me. First downs were even with six with, between the teams. Total yards, 112 for Oneida, 121 for West Green. Time of possession, 459 for Oneida, 701 for West Green. One turnover for West Green that ended up in an Oneida touchdown. 
So now West Green stays in that power eye, but what do we got? A flag early movement here. And John, I'll, I'll say this, in the interest of fairness, they call that early movement. We're close to that on a lot of our snaps. You see it, don't you? You've seen it, and you don't talk about it when we do it. But we're close to that early movement. I, I think, yeah, I've seen it on both sides of the ball. I will say that. And, and, I got and that worries me that they're calling it now. And I, got, and I got tired of saying it against West Green, but the running backs, what they're doing in their formation, they're leaning forward. They're ready to go. They're, 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 they're anxious, if you will. And that's a penalty. You can't rock in your stance. All right. Indians in the orange on orange to open up the season here tonight. Trying to get a big win on first and 15. Dalton Bowles, he's going to be wrapped up just past the line of scrimmage. Now, I think they hit him initially before he got to the line, and Dalton Bowles still able to fight forward for two. It'll be second and 13. Yeah, just a nice job. We saw a two tight end set out of West Green. Power eye. They thought they were going to line up and just smash on us. Well, it didn't work. So probably look for a... That time. Well, that's true. Maybe look for maybe a spread formation here. That's what they. That's what's happened best for them when they spread us out. Nine, ten, and ticking. Onana leads by ten, 24 to 14. Bowles remains in the backfield. Off or the wing back to the right is Corey Lindsay on second and 13. Here's going to be Reinhardt. He's looking to pass. No, he's looking to run. He's tucking it, trying to find String a place to out, go. Guys. Onana strings him out, and he'll be brought down for. What do we got? Maybe a gain of two on that sweep? Let's I see. Right, be third and ten. Ah, third and eight. As they finally oh, my goodness. I'm not going to say Gain anything. of four. I'm not saying nothing. It will be third and eight at the Oneida 20. Third down, eight. It's bad. Eight, 30 and ticking, though, John. This clock it's moving down. It's our friend down. right now. It's our friend right now. So now... Reinhardt has bowls. Now he's in the shotgun, is Reinhardt, on third down and eight. Are you buying that? Here's the snap. He'll give it to Bowles. Bowles trying the middle. He's, he's going to fight forward the ground, inside the 15, all the way down to the 10. Shades of Richard Seymour and the Greenback offense. There, that, that really was just the shotgun spread that they pull out for the first time tonight here, it's, it's and it's right, going to be a first and 10. And it's right on the 10-yard line, so it's first and goal right here for them. And the clock rolls for Oneida. Another tight game for the Indians. It's, it's just been that way the last couple of years for Oneida. These, these kids, they should be used to them for Oneida. They should relish them. Seven, look, at, look how wide they're spreading this out, Tim. Look at the receivers. Reinhardt's going to hand it off to Bowles. Bowles. Trying to fight forward here inside the 10, and they're going to spot him down to the 7. So Bowles with a gain of 3. And they may have just got Bowles hurt. I mean, he's coming up slow. And when I say that, the whistle is so late. They're basically using him as a pinata. They got him stood up, but they won't blow the whistle. They're giving him the benefit he might break out, but all that's allowing Ona to do is pound on him. This is almost like a flashback of the overtime series where Greenback started at our 10, and they got three, two. Uh, you Fortunately, know. we're up by ten right now. Right, yeah. That's it. Starnes is in the backfield here, John, on second and seven. Here's the give to Starnes. He's going to elude one in the backfield, lowers his head up to the four-yard line, and then he'll be driven back. Or do they spot it at the three? Let's see. A These gain of three or four for West Green. These running backs for West Green are unbelievably strong. I mean, we cannot get them on the ground. And you got to remember here, John, this – this is where, I mean, not, not making excuses, but it's a bigger school. You know, they're, they're substituting three and four and five and six guys every play. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to different formations, and they're able to do that because they got 70 kids over there on the sideline. Third and goal at the three. Starnes is the tailback. Here's the snap. It's oh. going to be the quarterback looking to get in. He cuts it up inside. Reinhardt driving for the end zone touchdown. Reinhardt gets the three. Is, is that a flag down, John? Maybe they, they called a hold finally because they missed one right in front of the official. Oh, it's a That's hold. a makeup. They went across the field and had a makeup call because that was right in front of the official, the first one. We had a guy in the backfield that had a beat on the quarterback, and they pretty much took the jersey off of him and didn't call it initially. That's a big, big call right there. Takes away a touchdown. So it goes to the 16. And it's third and goal from there. 
Third and goal from the 16. Oneida's got to, they got to have well, at least two big plays in them right here. If West Green has something they've been holding back, you're going to see it right here. Bowles is not in. Starns the tailback. For the pass right Third here. and 16, Reinhardt looking left. He's got a slant. The pass complete. Is he in the end zone? No, he's to the two. Pass complete to the two to Austin Davis. One. Right at the one, Tim. So it's four. another fourth and one for Oneida. I haven't seen Bowles yet, but I think we will see him. Fourth and goal at the one. With 6-12 to play, and here Bowles rumbles into the picture, John. I think if you're Oneida, you, you sell out right here on this goal line stand. I think and even be, then, it may not be enough. But I think you, they're going to go on a quick count right here. Oneida better be ready. Power eye, Bowles the tailback. Here's the snap. They give to Bowles, and he's into the end zone. Man, he just squirts Touchdown, West Green. He just squirts in there. They, he, they made a big hole for him. They just, he, all he had to do was drive across. It wasn't by much, but it was enough. So, not going to be easy tonight. Not going to be easy. 5.49 to play. Indians by four. The extra point attempt coming up from Wilson. The kick partially blocked. But, no good. And it's no good. So, time in on the field. We'll take the break with the score. It's the Oneida Indians 24, the West Green Buffaloes 20. Once again, if you purchased a ticket for the two and one. Once again, welcome back to Dr. M.E. Thompson Field. The action has been fast and furious in this second half, folks, and we love it. Hey. 5.49 left to play. 24 to 20 is the score. West Green set to kick off Oneida, expecting possibly an onside kick as they've got more men in the up position. Indian fans have gotten their tickets, their ticket money's worth the last two weeks. Here's the kickoff. West Green is kicking it. Toby Hood chucking over to the side, fields it on the run at the 15. Now he's going to be forward to the 20, slides to a stop at the 21, trying to make a cut. It'll be first and 10 Indians at their own 22. Coach Brewster is very, very close to getting this lit up. He saw an unsportsmanlike foul by a West Green player, and he is going off on the official that is bad. And... Uh, to no avail, and he's very close to getting an unsportsman like himself. We just need to need to move forward, but man, it's it's getting a little bit chippy right now. Got to get some first downs here, John. Got to get that clock, keep that clock moving. Oneida 24, West Green 20, Oneida at their own 22. Here's Cole West in the pistol. He'll take the snap, turns, little misdirection. Brandon Smith to the 30, lowers bang, his shoulder, drives bang. forward. He's across the 35-yard line with a first down run that nets 14 yards. Mr. Bowl, he's a pal driver. He runs over people. Well, Brandon Smith can do that as well. He lowered his shoulder and took two guys on. Chains will move and so will the clock. We do have a gentleman down with cramps right now for West Green and they're attending to him. The clock will stop, gives everyone a breather and a little bit of water. With 5.31 to go, reminder, next week it's the first home game in the district, the first district game of 2011, and the Indians are wanting a little revenge. A year ago, Wartburg might have been one of the things that kind of spoiled the season. Certainly was one of the things that spoiled the season, but got it off on the wrong foot. Bad taste in your mouth of what happened last year in that first was, district game in was, Morgan County. It was a bad taste, and you go ahead, you mentioned Morgan County. Maybe one of the only times that I can ever remember, maybe one of the few times it's ever happened where Oneida lost to all the Morgan County schools last year. Well, three Morgan Except County. Oakdale. Three Morgan County yeah. schools. I don't think the, the sweep has ever happened. And I'm not, that's all I'll say, or will say. You go ahead if you want to say something. Else. No, I'm done. You're looking at me like you. No, you go ahead. No. Anyway, we're here tonight. It's a great ball game. 531 left to play. Oneida just got a first down whistle. Move the chains, move the clock. 24 to 20 is the score with Oneida leading. They have the ball, and hopefully they'll keep this drive going as well as the clock. Now this is, John, where you're going to watch that back judge if you're the Oneida quarterback, right? Because they got to rewind the clock, and you want to take it down until he starts pumping that arm. Uh, you want to get as much time off the clock as you can, right? Is That's that what, what he's doing. We'll see. Uh, we're not. We could have burned 30 seconds right here. Cole West. 
Going to take the snap, turns, misdirection. Brandon Smith to the 40, to the 45. He gains nine on first down. Bear takes it up for nine yards. We're reeling off big chunks. Both offenses went in at halftime and made some adjustments. Let's go ahead and say that, Tim. The defensive have been on their heels in the second half. Okay. We're in little less of a hurry this play. Inside five minutes to go. On out a second and one at their own 45-yard line. Needing one for a first down. Here is the snap. Cole West turns, hands it off. Brandon Smith. I Lean forward. He got enough for the first down oh. here. Yeah, he did. The spot's on this side, I think. So he only needed a yard, and he'll have it. I think they're going to spot for a measurement here, Tim. Nope. You're right. You're exactly right. We'll take it. It was just enough. The clock will roll. We'll call it the 47. 426 and counting on the fourth quarter clock. on that leads 24 to 20 if you're just now joining us. If you are on tape delay, you must be an insomniac. 4.15 to go, Cole West takes the snap, give to the fullback, Michael Weber follows a little bit of a surge in the line forward. Let's call this two yards for Weber. And I think West Green has gotten, they're a little bit smart on us right now, Tim. They realize that Oneida doesn't want to do anything drastic here and they're just pounding up the middle. They're starting to stack the box a little bit. Let's see if Oneida's got an answer to them doing that. Well, do you, you know, given the, the struggles on the last couple of drives, you're, you're caught here. Your offense is moving it. Let's see what the Indians do on second and eight. Cole West in the pistol. Going to take the snap, turns, gives it to Brandon Smith. Smith across the 50, still on his feet, driving forward to the 45-yard line of West Green. The second effort is a gain of six for Brandon Smith, and it'll be third and two. Just an all-out effort by Brandon to gather up some extra yards at the end of that run. And uh, wow, third and two, and I'm just sitting here looking at the clock roll down to right at three minutes left when they come up to the line to take the snap. It does Oneida. How many timeouts does West Green have as I look down at Ben Allen? Have you, did you get the answer yet? Not yet. Third and two, Indians at the West Green 45. Cole West takes the snap, gives fumble. to Jarrett Lay, loose football. Looks like a little confusion and West Green recovers it. Wow. The only thing we didn't need, the only thing. And the heads are down already. Come on guys, you have a lead now. All you gotta do is make a play on defense. 2.47 to go. All the air has went out of this orange bunch, Tim. I can see it right now. West Green breaks huddle with new life. Down four. And Bowles pumping his arms back there. Here's the snap. Bowles going to take it. Trying through the middle. He's into Indian territory across the 50 to the Oneida 46-yard line. That'll go for a gain of Oneida's eight. got to be aware they're on eight, the line of scrimmage. Seven. We got to get set. We got to go. They're on the line. West Green with a second and three, 2.25 to go. They're probably going to run the same play every time, Tim. High formation. They snap it. They give it. And here he's going to break out. Weber grabs him, brings him down at the 40-yard line as Bowles carries it for a gain of six. Clock will stop when they reset the chains. When they mark the ball and the chains get set, they'll restart the clock. West Green is on the ball. Oneida looking a little bit disorganized right now. West Green making a substitution here. Or I'm sorry, the quarterback's coming in. coming in. At the two minute mark, West Green at the Oneida 39. Reinhardt takes the snap, gives it to Bowles. Bowles lowers his head, dives forward down to the 36, gain of three. One forty nine. Bowles is going out. They're bringing a little bit of quickness in right here. This is what we got to be aware of if we're on out of defense. This kid is quick coming in. One thirty seven and counting. Twenty four twenty is the score. On out of leads. West Green driving. Reinhardt under center takes the snap, gives to Starnes. Starnes is going to be wrapped up and brought down. No gain. Timeout being asked for by West Green. Still haven't found out how many they have. 
See if, see if we can research how many timeouts West Green has. Uh, as they take this one, a minute 19 to go. We'll take the break. Your score is the United Indians 24, the West Green Buffaloes 20. And one. Once again, folks, we're back at Oneida, Dr. Emmy Thompson Field. 119 set to play. You got the West Green timeout count. West Green just took a timeout. They have one remaining as we have it upstairs here. And like I said, 119 left to play. West Green driving on the Oneida 36. Third down and seven, which sort of lost track of how important the down situation has become, Tim. They need the Oneida 29 for a first down. Dalton Bowles. Signed to play with Elon University next year and a hard count pulls the Indians off sides. That's a, a, a wise move out of that timeout. Very wise move. Too bad for Oneida. Too, too bad. And you know they talked about it. Do not jump off sides. Oh well. It doesn't lose you the game though. You're still in it. You gotta buckle it up and bring it. So West Green now needs two yards. And Bowles has been good for that much most any time he touches the football. It'll be third and two, West Green at the Oneida 31-yard line. Not really sure what the officials are doing other than giving West Green a little bit more time to get a play called in this hurry up. He's wanting time on the clock. It was only 119, so I guess they're adding the second. 119. They got it. Jerry Lay, ready to go. Great job tonight, spotting, putting time on the clock. Here's a third and two for West Green. If you're not at 31, here's the give to Bowles. Bowles has a first down. There's a flag down as Bowles is going to be dropped at the Onada 20. Let's see, this is a huge flag. Wouldn't surprise me none if it's not a chop block again. And the official from the near side, John, your friend, the one you've been so tough on all night. They're Seeking your one. approval. Hang on, hang on. The head official They're saying, are you it. sure? Are you sure? They're talking about it. The flag is thrown back at the 31-yard line, which would not be a first down, and it is an illegal block. They're doing it every time. I mean... They're doing it almost every play. It's an easy call for the officials. That will be a 15-yard penalty. And they're getting a lot of assistance from this coaching sideline over here on the Onada, and that's where the, that's where the call come from. They're adamant about it. You can't get these kids hurt. Big call went for Onada right here, Tim. So now West Green and uncomfortable territory, but we know we've seen them able to do it. Third and 15 at the Onada 44. Here's Ryan out dropping back. He's looking to pass. Still looking. He lost it downfield and overthrows his intended receiver who tried to draw a penalty on Houston West. And now it is fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down and about 14, 15 yards, folks. 101 on the clock. John, they may 24, not. 24 20 is a score, Oneida leads. With 101 to go, if you're West Green, do you try to surprise Oneida and go for it all, not just the first down? Why not? We got to be careful, don't we? Here it is. I don't think the kid can throw it that far, too. Fourth and 15, West Green at the Oneida 44. This down could settle it if the Indians can hold. You hear the Oneida crowd. And now a timeout is requested. West Green has used their final one. We'll take the same. No, we won't. John, this is too big a moment. Let's keep it right here. And let's talk about how big a moment this is. Coming off a four and six season did Oneida, in which three games they lost by less than one touchdown. Those three games could have put them in position to actually not only be in the playoffs, but possibly have won the district. That's how close things went. Plays that went against them. We mentioned Wartburg last year, where it was just a fluke play lost them the game. We saw them lose last week in overtime on the very last play of the game on a fourth and one, where Greenback beats them. I mean, they need a win. Even they need here, a win you in fumbled. a close game where they made mistakes, but they fought back and they've done some good things. And you don't this even want to. This ahead. is the kind of play they have to make. And you don't even want to think about what would happen if you don't make it. No, you don't. Here is Rest Green with a fourth and 15. Reinhardt under center, Bowles behind him, dropping back. 
Looking left, looking, he's got a rush. He's gonna be hit, he eludes the rush. Now he tries to no run way, for gonna... it. He slides out of bounds and Onata slows up and it's gonna be a turnover on downs. They have no timeouts remaining. 49 seconds left. It's B for victory formation that you'll see Onata in. The kids are elated. The deflation after the turnover by Onada on their last drive, it, when they fumbled it away, you could just see it. They all dropped their heads like they were, here we go again. No, you can't play like that. You gotta play for every play. They found a way to win tonight. They gotta, they gotta learn from this. They have to move forward, but they gotta learn from this. They, be, they beat a, a good team here tonight if, if things hold up, Tim. Wow, John, this, this is, again, this is not the West Green from 13 years ago. That was a winless team. This West Green has been making the playoffs in AAA. They won some playoff games. Uh, they're a big team, a strong team. They got more kids on the sideline than we do, more substitutions. You pointed that out. The Indians face adversity again, just like they did last week. Down four at the half. They have a tremendous third quarter, capitalize on some opportunities, and now have, uh, have Face down the beast and appear to be on their way to their first win of 2011. You just got to snap it and kneel. And there you go, Tim. In the second half, they took advantage of opportunities that were presented to them on fumbles by Wes Green. They made the plays that they needed to make. In the first half, they didn't take advantage. And last week at Greenback, they didn't take advantage. They got to learn from this and move forward and play every play. So Cole West under center, and that's a rarity. Cole gets up under there, snaps and goes to an E. Clock runs with 46 seconds. Probably going to have to run one more play. But what a nice win for Oneida on their home field in front of the home crowd for the first time. It's going to be nice to be on the reservation for three, for two more weeks, Tim. Well, Coach Brewster just got a little cool bath. They won't bother him too much this time of year. Oneida, one more kneel down. Should do the trick as this... Triple A team from Greenville. Gonna have a long drive back. They're, they're in a tough division. They played a tough game tonight. Costly penalties and fumbles is what they will point to. The Indians will point to. They got down, but didn't give up. And Oneida has won this football game. As we take the break, we tell you the final in the opening game of 2011 here at home for the Indians. It's the Oneida Indians 24, the West Green Buffaloes 20. All right, folks, welcome back to Oneida High School. Dr. M.E. Thompson Field was the site of a barn burner once again for the Oneida Indians and West Green Buffaloes. Oneida extends, I guess it's dominance, if you want to call it that, <laughs> over West Green. Two games to none in this short-lived series going back to 1998 was the first game, and Oneida wins 24 to 20 in what was a great ball game. We've seen, we've been entertained the first two weeks of this season, Tim, have we not? We've seen some great players on the opposite side of the teams that we've played and, and two great running backs and Oneida found a way to win tonight. Down seven to three at halftime, wasn't able to really do anything offensively. They went on a tear in the second half to put 21 points on the board, 14 in the, in the second, in the third quarter, I should say, really quick. And uh, West Green came back. You would expect them to uh, behind their, their great running back Mr. Bowles, and, and I, he had to have been close to 200 yards, Tim, and we'll, we'll get the final stats as we, as we move on to the conclusion of this broadcast. But, man, what a great game. What a nice win for Oneida getting set up for next week's first district matchup with Wartburg. And uh, just, a, just an overall nice game for, the, for, the, for opening things up here on this homestand at the reservations for the Oneida, for the Oneida faithful, Tim. And like you say, you know, it just sets the, sets the table. You're looking for a, a weakened Wartburg team coming in here next week. They're not as strong as they were a year ago. And, uh, and uh, trying to get off on the right foot in the district. The Indians get the win here and finally get a close win, get that confidence and, and being at home. It's exciting for an Oneida fan for this one tonight. We made comment about it, you know, of them having so many people on the sidelines that didn't know how they really got them in over there. Their players, they probably dressed 70-something kids. And, and I was not, if you watch the playback, they were substituting four and five kids sometimes on plays. They were running different sets and different formations and, and linemen and, and receivers were, were substituting freely. They had a bunch of kids and our kids were tired at the end of the ball game. They really were. They were beat up, but they found a way 
to win. And that's that's all that the coaching staff for Oneida is asking of them is to play to the very last play, play every la every play like it's the last play. And you know, when after the turnover late on our last drive, if they take that down and score, where are we at? You know, where's our psyche at going into next week? Where, this is big. I, I think yeah. the coaching staff can't be nothing more than pleased. I'm sure when they get the when they get the turnover, does West Green, you know, maybe what are you thinking if you're the coach? Why did I schedule this? Where, where was yeah. that? Yeah. I'm sure none of that was going on. I'm just making making a comment there on my end. But you know, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice to get a win. Two teams that had experienced that week one loss, and we're looking to try to get things on track here in the second week and uh and you know uh really more to lose like you say more to lose for the buffaloes than for the indians just because of the size difference of the schools uh however uh and, you know it makes it a little bit sweeter for the indians on this one and a little bit of confidence to move forward as they get set for wartburg next week we've got plenty left uh so stay with us we're going to recap the scoring the game statistics we'll talk with the coaches and more from here at Dr. Emmy Thompson Field, as we tell you once again, the final in this opening home game of the 2011 season. It's the Oneida Indians, 24, and the West Green Buffaloes, 20. Okay, I'm going to bring in one. Welcome back to Oneida High School. The Indians defeat the West Green Buffaloes here tonight by a final score of 24 to 20. Wasn't easy for the Indians. They were down the entire first half. But a huge third quarter for Oneida saw them swing to the lead, one that they did not relinquish despite the best efforts of West Green with late pushes against the Oneida defense. Some timely uh, fumbles and some untimely penalties uh, really for both sides led to an excitement in this game and these early season mistakes uh, made it tough on both sides. The Indians are able to come out with the win. West Green struck first in the first quarter on their opening possession they fumbled Oneida missed a 40-yard field goal attempt that would have taken some of the mystery out of this one in the late going it seems John but that one was just wide to the left from Douglas Manning and so West Green took the ensuing possession all the way downfield and it was Dalton Bowles with the first touchdown run for him of the night that would be his first of three as he put it in from three yards out Trevor Wilson with the extra point. West Green led with 4.14 to play in the first quarter, 7 to nothing. The Indians would strike in the second quarter with a field goal with 6.59 to play. Douglas Manning from 26 yards out made it 7 to 3, and that's where we were at halftime. In the third quarter, Oneida would waste little time in getting on the scoreboard. It was a huge pass play for Oneida that got them down in scoring position, I'm sorry, it's a huge run play, a counter run play by Brandon Bear-Smith uh, that took it down the right sideline, then a penalty tacked on at the end of that, and it was Cole West who kept that drive off with a touchdown run of seven yards to put Oneida up 10 to seven with 10-13 to play in the third quarter. The ensuing play, a kickoff from the Indians' Douglas Manning backing Dalton Bowles up down with his heels on the goal line. He fumbled around as he tried to pick it up at the 10. He didn't get to it, and Houston West hustled down and recovered it for the Indians. A couple of plays later, Toby Hood, seven yards for the touchdown, and the Indians led 17-7 to as Douglas Manning added the extra point. West Green would get it together and get a big drive, drive down and score on a touchdown run from Dalton Bowles capping it off from five yards. Trevor Wilson, the extra point, 247 to play in the third, and it was 17-14 with Oneida remaining in the lead. And then the Indians would pull a surprise from their bag of tricks. They go to the air, and it's Houston West with a 44-yard touchdown reception from Cole West. Very well planned, timed, and played play by all coaches and players involved. And Cole to Houston made it after the extra point from Douglas Manning, 24 to 14. West Green would tack on another touchdown from Dalton Bowles with six minutes to go. They made it 24-20. And then with inside three minutes to play, it was Oneida fumbling at midfield and West Green set up with another chance. And it appeared, John, that they had a first down with about a minute to go down to the Oneida 20, but an illegal block, which had been called more than once on the Buffaloes this evening, negated that play, put the Buffaloes in an uncomfortable passing situation for two plays, in which they did not convert, and the Indians hold, and the Buffaloes go home with the loss here tonight. 
as we tell you once again the final score in this one. The Oneida Indians, by the way, moving to one and one. The West Green Buffaloes falling to zero oh and two. Your final in this one, as we uh, we ask you to stay tuned for statistics and coaches' interviews to come. Is the Oneida Indians twenty-four, the West Green Buffaloes twenty. Welcome back to Oneida. The Indians get their first win of the season, 24-20 over the West Green Buffaloes. Taking a look at our stats, uh, first downs, West Green had 17, Oneida with 12. Rushing yardage for tonight's game, West Green 297 yards to Oneida's 160 on uh, 35 attempts for Oneida, 52 rushing plays for West Green. Passing tonight, uh, the Indians passed the ball three times, or pardon me, six times, completing three of those. West Green attempted six passes and completing two. The Indians had 54 yards through the air to West Green's 24. Total yardage, West Green 321 yards and Oneida 214. Time of possession, Oneida 19 minutes, 59 seconds. West Green 28 minutes, one second. Key to the night's game, turnovers. Four turnovers tonight for West Green, only one for the Indians. And we'll look at uh, individual stats as Ben Allen compiles that for us and will bring that up for us. Does a fine job on all of our stats. Although our printer got fried last week in the rain at Greenback, so we have to look at these as he pulls them up off of the screen. But once again, your telltale stat of tonight is the one on the board. The Indians get their first win of the season, 24 to 20, over West Green. Two weeks in a row, we've had uh, some uh, two close games. The Indians get their win tonight. And now looking at for Oneida, uh, quarterback Cole West, as I said earlier, six attempts, three completions uh, for 54 yards. His longest was 34. Rushing for Oneida, Brandon Smith, 12 carries, 109 yards. Our first 100-yard rusher, averaged nine yards per carry. Other rushers for the Indians tonight, uh, Danon West, six carries for 15 yards. Michael Weber, five carries for 17. Houston West, one for eight. Toby Hood, two carries for four. Cole West, seven for 17. And Jarrett Lay, two carries for three. Tackles, Brandon Smith. We knew he did a fine job tonight. Officially, 17 tackles on the books for Brandon Smith tonight. Uh, Jarrett Lay also had an outstanding night with nine tackles. Tanner Boshears with four. Michael Weber with three. Trevor Allen, two. Houston West with three. Cole West with four. Toby Hood with three. And numerous other players with one tackle. But Brandon Smith, 17 tackles tonight for the Indians on a fine defensive effort. Once again, your final score, 24 to 20. We're going to take another break and be back with Coach Brewster right after this. And one. Welcome back to Dr. Emmy Thompson Field. The Oneida Indians 24-20 winners over the West Green Buffaloes here tonight. And Co jo Coach John Brewster joins us now. Coach Brewster. Indian fans going to get their money's worth every time. It seems this one was a tight one, but uh, uh, this time we can smile after it's over and, and very excited about the finish against a very good team. Yeah. Um, it's you know, I told somebody the other day it's kind of like playing the SEC this year because they had 17 starters back this year, so every week we're going to be tested. Um, you know, I thought the kids uh, did a great job. You know, they were a little. I think we had a little bit of a greenback hangover, uh, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, the kids came out, and, you know, I'm so proud of them because I talked to some of them this week, and they were in tears, you know, just saying, you know, Coach, we we're in so many close games and we're not winning. You know, it was, they were disheartened. So to see them come out and play and, and uh, you know, get a big win like that is, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's great for them, and I'm, I'm very happy for our players. Taking a look at that first half, you know, one of the key moments, uh, you, you recover a fumble early on the first possession from West Green, unable to move the football, but you line up to attempt a 40-yard field goal. And we were talking about wondering when the last time Oneida attempted a 40-yard field goal was. 
Well, I don't know, but I have a feeling, you know, if we get on the if, – if we're 35 or in, we're going to kick it. So, you know, unless it's short yardage. So, uh, Indian fans will get to see a lot of uh, a lot of kicking this year because we have a lot of trust in Dougie. Now, it looked like it was really close, maybe just off to the left. Is that how it went? I thought it was good, but from my angle, you know, I, you know, he, he kicked it far and, you know, but – Shoot, he's just been kicking a football for, you know, a month and a half or something. So, you know, he's, he's come a long ways. He's got an uh, extremely strong lead. Well, and his leg would play a part in the later going. But remaining on the first half, 7-3, to three, uh, the Indians go to the locker room. With the tie, you do get the 26-yard the field goal from Douglas. And after West Green on that, when you miss the field goal, they take it downfield and look pretty strong doing it. You're able to keep them out of the end zone the remainder of that first half. Talk about the importance of that. Um, you know, kids, kids were just playing hard. They were, uh, you know, they, they, they came out and, you know, were, were letting uh, a few things frustrate them and not playing, you know, the way that we expect them to play. You know, we don't expect personal fouls. That's not tolerated here, you know, horse collars, things like that. Once they got settled down, you know, they, they, they played hard. They played hard, and I'm really proud of the way they handled that before halftime. Out of the locker room, it was uh, an instant success on the play, kind of a little counter uh, with Brandon Smith. Talk about why that play was chosen then. Did, had you all seen something from the first half that you wanted to make a, an adjustment to? Yeah, we saw We kind of started figuring out how they were how they were lining up to us. So we were trying to uh, double X. It hits a little wider, so we started trying to hit it a little closer to the center and get upfield a little bit faster and try and get underneath their overhang. Because they were, they had bowls out there on the edge a lot, kind of like uh, Greenback did with Seymour last week. So we were just trying to get it a little tighter. And once we started getting it in there a little bit tighter, double X uh, started opening up for us. Of course, the uh, Indians score a touchdown just moments later, and then uh, Douglas Manning booms a big kickoff, and Bowles, uh, working to field that football, was unable to get. Uh, a secure grip on it, and Houston West flying down the field uh, falls on that football at the 10 and sets the Indians up for another touchdown, a huge chain of events. Yeah. Houston played unbelievable tonight. He, uh, you know, he was going hard constantly, had a, had a big block for Cole down there. Um, you know, Houston's a team guy, and, uh, you know, he keeps he, – he puts his teammates first. And, uh, you know, I was just so proud of him tonight. You know, Houston – you know, he keeps working and, and keeps putting team first. You know, he's going to – he's got a chance to be one of the – you know, he, well, he is. He's one of the most dangerous athletes in our district. And, uh, you know, it just uh, – I'm just so proud of him because he, he, he played physical, played fast, and played disciplined. Uh, he also had a huge catch on a, on a, on a, a you know, a, a high pass, and he went up and got it and came down and got the Indians a first down at, at a very crucial moment as well. Right. And, you know, we saw it, but we were protection-wise, they were giving us overhang at times on our tackle, and then we're bringing balls up on the edge. So our slide protection, we weren't able to slide out and pick him up. So we started kind of having to half roll or do stuff off play action or keep two backs in to max protect. And, uh, you know, Houston, uh kid had his hands on him. Houston did a great job of getting around him and a great throw by Cole, and Houston made a great cut after he caught it. So the Indians get the momentum, but West Green does what they do, get the ball to Bowles, and he does what he does, seven, eight, nine yards of carry, sometimes 22. Uh, and He just seemed to be getting stronger as the night was going on. At times there in that third quarter, he brings them back to, to within a touchdown and uh, or closer than a touchdown. Now your Indians have to go on offense again. Talk to us about that series. Well, it was just, you know, that's one thing you know when we step out of district play and play a bigger school. Uh, depth is always a concern. Uh, it was huge, you know, Trevor Allen getting chop blocked like he did early on, getting hurt, and then uh, one later with Houston, he got banged up, and then we had a, another one that happened too. So we were getting a little thin uh, on the D line. You know, those kids were playing hard, but they were getting gassed, and we had, you know, three of our top linemen over there on the sidelines with knees and ankles and everything else. Uh, but, you know, those guys that were in there, they played their hind end off, and I'm proud of them. And then it comes down to the Indians have the football at midfield and, uh, you know, the, the, the clutch time and then a, a mistake happens again. It's a fumble. And the worry, I think, for, for everyone was that, you know, we still were winning by four 
here's a, a real mental test for these Indians who have been in these close games and have not necessarily come out on top if they pass that test. Well, that was, you know, we talked to Cole about it. Cole played great. He's a great player, going to be a great player. Uh, on that, we had uh, 41 Bob, which is an ISO straight up the middle, handing it to Bear. And uh, he said he uh, got confused on the call a little bit and handed it to Jarrett, and it, Jarrett wasn't expecting it, so we put it on the ground. And, you know, that's just one of them, you know, one of them things that's going to happen, you know. Uh, it won't happen again. I can make sure of that, but, you know, just – it was just it, it was there for a second I was like oh my gosh you know ha, you know it's happening again but uh, cheese came over there and some of those guys and they winked at me they said coach we got this so you know you talk about an unbelievable feeling to where you know your kids will know okay we're gonna get this thing back we're gonna get this thing stopped you know it just you know unbelievable the kids tonight all right coach have we played the best two running backs we're gonna see uh, I can't imagine seeing another one that good. You know, I say that, but, you know, you still got Romero at Oz, and, and uh, Cofield has a stable, and, uh, you know, there's still some good ones out there, but you talk about two tests when you play Seymour and, and uh, Bowles back-to-back, -back, that's, that's pretty dang tough because they're both extremely fast, but they're also two different types of runners. Uh, Bowles was a little harder. He can hunker down, and he's a small target, and uh, Seymour's just so strong, you know, just uh, – uh, Unbelievably strong in his uh, in his in his lower body, uh, you know, guys. I I hope we don't see any more like that. All right, next week you get into district play for the first time, uh, and it's going to be at home. And uh, we mentioned during the broadcast, it's a team uh, that you're going to play a, a game that probably still leaves a little bit of a bad taste in everybody's mouth from last year, and it kind of really maybe hung over the season a little bit. Uh, affecting how things went. Oneida lost at Wartburg a year ago on kind of a freaky type play. And uh, you got a chance to maybe, you know, exercise those demons, as they say, here a week from tonight at home. It'd be a nice, it's a nice opportunity. Right. It is, you know, kids are excited. Uh, you know, Wartburg, you know, they just outplayed us, outcoached us last year. Uh, you know, they, the kids have had this one circled for a long time. Uh, you know, they have tremendous respect for Wartburg. I, I, I have tremendous respect for Wartburg. Uh, they have a bunch of speed. They have a bunch of great skill kids. You know, it's it's going to be exciting. You know, I'd like to see injury-wise Monday where we stand, you know, with Cody. Uh, Cody Birchfield got banged up and, and uh, Trevor Allen, you know. So, uh, you know, you may be seeing a, a few ninth graders hitting the field here pretty soon. All right, Coach, you mentioned the injury. What you know at this point, uh, what can you tell us about the health out of tonight's game? Uh, you know, I've got to check with those guys. They're going to go see uh, Doc Robbins in the morning. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, with Trevor, we thought early on it's either a, a bone bruise or a high ankle sprain. I mean, it was a nasty, you know, it was a nasty, nasty, you know, play. I mean, it just he just got folded up. I mean, it, it looked bad. We're very fortunate he didn't get hurt a little bit worse than that. But, you know, we'll see. Trevor's tough. You know, he – and Cody both, they stayed down there and cried on the sideline, you know, about the whole time because they couldn't be out there, you know, be out there with their brothers and their teammates. All right, pretty good support from the crowd here tonight, but we use a few more when we get into district play next week. Oh, yeah, we sure could. And, you know, it was, uh, uh, you know, West Green's a daggone good football team. I'd be shocked if they don't uh, finish second over there to Greenville. Um, you know, everything, uh, you know, the kids were unsure about them, didn't know anything about it, but I talked to uh, one of my buddies, Sean Witten, up Elizabeth, and talked to Lee Hammonds, uh, and, you know, they told the same thing. You know, they said they'll mash you in the mouth, and they're big up front, and, you know, they didn't lie about it. They're a dang good football team, huge numbers. You know, uh, you know Coach Case is doing a great job there. Certainly has turned around from, from uh, what West Green used to be, and, and you can see that here tonight. Coach, any final thoughts before we let you go? Uh, no, just uh, I hope everybody comes out next week and supports us. Uh, you know, got something special next week we're going to do and, uh, you know, exciting. So, uh, you know, hope everybody comes out, supports these kids, and, uh, and uh, you know, just stay behind these kids. I'm telling you, you talk about a likable bunch of kids. This is probably the most likable and, and funnest group to coach I've ever been involved with in, in my years of coaching. All right, Coach, congratulations on the win. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be back to wrap things up. Final once again, it's the Oneida Indians 24 and the West Green Buffaloes 20. And one. Welcome back to Dr. Emmy Thompson Field. The Oneida Indians win tonight 24 to 20. They get their first win of 2011. Now one and one. You get the win over the West Green Buffaloes. Triple A school from up in the Greenville area. And now with the one and one record, 
They'll come back home next week, and they'll face off the first district opponent, the team that beat them last year, the Wartburg Bulldogs. And uh, we'll turn first to John Strunk. Your thoughts on tonight's game, and then I believe you've got the defensive player of the game. Okay, Tim, and I think it was just what you and Coach Brewster alluded to as, as he did his final comments. It was just a must win for Oneida in the sense that from a confidence builder, you know, there were so many close games that they lost last year and going into even last week at Greenback, um, they fumble. You know, they're going there. They have control of the game. They have the lead, but they fumble. They make a mistake. The air gets deflated out of them, but they respond and, and they're able to hold on at the end and, and win. And I think this is going to be a big confidence builder. A big team was West Green and a much improved team of what they used to be. We've, we've alluded to that several times. So going into next week, I think it's, it's, it's probably one of the, the best things that could have happened from the outcome of this game. And uh, Wartburg is a whole new ball game with a district opponent, and we've got to get started there with a win on our home field. So we invite everybody to come out that may not have been able to come out tonight. And defensive player of the game tonight is going to go to uh, Brandon Smith. Bear had uh, 17 tackles. Couldn't be outdone by Mr. Warren of last week, who had 16. So uh, that defensive side's got a little bit of a rivalry building right now. So uh, he also had a big night on offense. We'll see how that goes. Of course, John mentioned Dan and West had the 16 last week. Bear was 17 this week. Who's up for 18 against Wartburg? We'll find out. Kevin, you've got the offensive player of the game and your closing thoughts. Well, you couldn't ask for a better game tonight, though, not to, to get their confidence back. A team that really virtually had more than twice the players. They had extreme depth. They had three or four guys at each position. As, as John L. pointed to earlier in the game, you know, they were subbing in four and five guys every play. And uh, the Indians toughed it up. Uh, and held them off there at the last in a good close game, which has plagued us in a while. So everything just coming together tonight was a real good confidence builder going into the uh, uh, district. And uh, the offensive player of the game, the same as the defensive player of the game, Brandon Smith. I think that's the first time that we've ever had that happen. But uh, had 108 yards, first 100-yard rush of this year for the Indians. Just an outstanding effort by him tonight. Just uh, You couldn't ask for a better effort than Brandon. All right, we want to thank you for joining us here this evening, and uh, we also want to thank our sponsors of football here on WBNT-FM and OCB Cable Channel 4. Those include Brennan's Foot and Ankle Care, Miller & Son Concrete and Paving, McDonald's of Oneida, Hometown Furniture, Cell Depot, B&B Roofing and Metals, Marler's Auto Mart, Mountain People's Health Council, Rainbow Ford, Plata Drugs, and the Stand Program. We certainly appreciate them for sponsoring football here on WBNT-FM, both Oneida and Scott High, and we urge you, if you appreciate it, when you're in their place of business, or if you get the opportunity, let them know how much you appreciate it as well, because uh, we certainly do. We want to invite you back next week. We're going to be here at Dr. M.E. Thompson Field, and it should be another good one. The Wartburg Bulldogs, they defeated the Indians a year ago, and the Indians didn't make the playoffs, finished four and six. A lot of that was Wartburg's fault. Mm -hmm. The Indians want a little bit of revenge, so it should be a good one next week when the Bulldogs come in. Oneida and Wartburg one week from tonight in game three of this 2011 season, and we'll have it for you here on WBNT-FM. For all those involved in the broadcast, Ben Allen keeping the stats, Jerry Lay, the spotter for him tonight, Grayson Buttram behind the camera. I want to thank Kevin Akers, uh, who does the PA announcing as well as work with us here on the radio when we're at home. A, a split duty job. And I want to thank John Strunk for the color commentary here tonight. This is Tim Smith saying thanks for joining us. Your final in this one once again, the Oneida Indians 24 and the West Green Buffaloes 20. You've been listening to Oneida Football on WBNT-FM and OCV Cable Channel 4. <laughs>